Tulsa Colts, owners of the worst record in the NFL, and Blundering Bucks, owners of the second worst record in the NFL, playing in a meaningful game this late in the NFL season. Believe it or not, about the only thing the Colts did right this season was lose enough games to earn the number one pick in next year's draft. They also own Tampa Bay's first round pick. So a victory over the Bucks today will give them the number one and number two pick in next year's draft. Today, in what has become a must-win game, Indianapolis goes against Tampa Bay. Believe it or not! NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Indianapolis Colts versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Welcome to Tampa Stadium, everybody, where they hosted Super Bowl 25 back last January. And today, as the Colts and Buccaneers get set to go, they're calling it the Reapers Bowl. That's right, super spelled backwards. Indianapolis, with a win today, will have the number one and two picks coming up in next year's draft in April. That's because of the Chris Chandler trade from Indianapolis to Tampa Bay. Chandler isn't even a member of the Bucs anymore. I'm Jim Donovan with Beasley Reese. Nice to be with you once again. We have two football coaches that are very much on the bubble here right. today. They could be done as of next week or in the next couple of weeks. Let's start with Rick Venturi. Well, Rick Venturi is in the running. He has a shot. He will be interviewed along with two or three candidates, and they're looking for somebody with NFL experience. They like to bring some winners in here. Now, here's what Rick Venturi has to do to get that head coaching job. He's got to convince the Ursays that he can convince some top-flight offensive and defensive coordinators to work along with him and put their futures in his hands. Richard Williamson, a real long shot to hold on to the job. He really is. I spoke to um, Buck owner Hugh Culverhouse just before the game a few minutes ago, and he said that he will talk to his head coach on Friday. Now, it'll be a case of a salesman talking to a buyer. If Richard Williamson can convince Hugh Culverhouse that he has a definite plan of future works that will get this organization turned around, he'll get the job. If he cannot, he will not get it. Tampa Bay will kick off to Indianapolis. The Bucks have won twice. Indianapolis has won once. Steve Christie nails a line drive. Five yards deep in the end zone. Sammy Martin will keep it in the end zone and a touchback. The offensive line banged up. They hope that Irv Pankey, back for his second game, can hold the fort at left tackle. But this offensive line has just been besieged by injuries since training camp. Jeff George has been the victim of that offensive line being injured. He's been sacked way over 50 times coming into the game. Clark is in for the sick Eric Dickerson, who's had the flu and is trying to get back into the lineup today. And then when they go to a four-wide situation, Clarence Verdan, a speedy wide receiver, and Sammy Martin come in to join that offensive set. Manoa is in the backfield as the lone back in that backfield right now. First down at the 20-yard line as we look at Jeff George. Wrapping up his second season as the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. This is Tim Manoa. And Manoa runs it out near the 23-yard line. Ray Seals is in on the tackle for the Buccaneers, along with Newton. Here's the front seven. Seals is in there with Nichols and Newton. Good linebackers, McCants, Murphy, Solomon, and Thomas. McCants actually goes as a down lineman now, although you'll see him up and off a lot. In the secondary, two rookies at safety, Covington and Carter. And then when they go to their nickel situation, the Buccaneers bring in Frizzell and Daryl Fullington. Second down now for Indianapolis. Ball is at the 23-yard line. And George goes back to Manoa. And Manoa runs it out near a first down and pushes just short of the 30-yard line, brought down by Jesse Solomon. Mark Vanderpool was the offensive lineman that was leading the charge here for the Colts. It's a form of the counter trade. The two offensive linemen from the backside pull out front. They get a real good surge, and Manoa using a lot of power to push forward. That's a good play. Boy, it's interesting, basically, to see them come out running the football. You know, it really is. They like to do that in order to keep the pressure off of Jeff George. They don't want him to feel like he's got to come in and win a game by himself. And also, you know, they've given up so many sacks that they need to get some control going. And I think what they saw last Saturday, when the Chicago Bears just ran and ran at this Buccaneer defense, they said that we could probably try and do that too. That's Clarence Verdan in motion. And this is Clark, and Clark's got the first down as he goes over the left side of the offensive line onto the 34-yard line. Solomon is again in on the tackle for the Bucs. 
And the Indianapolis Colts come out, run, 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 and they get a first down, their first of the game. It's a super start for this team. Now, you see that Clark and Manoa are carrying the ball, carrying the load there when it comes to running the ball. That's because Eric Dickerson suffered from the flu. He had to stay out last week, and he only got one day of practice, and we may see him, but only sparingly. We are without a Jeff George pass so far. First to 10, though, for the Colts at the 34-yard line. And they run it again. This is Tim Manoa. Gets away from a tackle and pushes his way out to the 38-yard line. Solomon is in on the tackle, and now we've got some pushing and shoving. Kevin Call gets into it with Jesse Solomon over by the Colts bench. So you can see that there are some high spirits here in this ball game. Two ticked off football teams. There is one very ticked off linebacker, and there he is, Broderick Thomas, who did not make the Pro Bowl. You know, he really should have. He had an excellent year. And if you look at him right now, you can see a yellowish lay on his hip. He's wearing that in protest, you know, because he feels like he should have gotten off an airplane in a few weeks and have one of those things wrapped around his neck in honor of making it to Hawaii and the Pro Bowl. I mean, he is not bashful. He is upset. Second down now, six yards to go. George for his first pass, and it's complete. Bill Brooks takes it off his knee and carries out for a cold first down out to the 48-yard line, covered on the play by rookie Marty Carter out of Middle Tennessee. You know, we spoke to Billy Brooks over the last couple of days since we've been in town, and he says that, you know, they want to come out here and show that they've got a lot of pride. Nobody wants to lose this game. They want to come out and show that they are not the worst team when it comes to final record in the National Football League. That's a good play there by a good, good player, Billy Brooks. First and 10, the Colts have it at the 48-yard line. Clark Demanoa set behind George. This is Clark. Manoa gives him a block, but he's trapped and brought down. I'll tell you who looks like a pro bowler off the start of this game. It's Jesse Solomon. He's made about five tackles so far. Jesse Solomon is all over the place once again. That was a form of a counter, and uh, the Tampa Bay defense got some good pressure. You see the line pulling from the backside. You've got some penetration up front, and whenever you get that, that basically destroys the play. You get the running back dancing around in the backfield, and the pursuit has time to come around. And Solomon, of course, that time leading the charge. Second down now. 13. They lose three on first down. Ten and a half to go here in the first quarter. No score. The Colts and Buccaneers from Tampa Stadium. Good protection for George. This is Manoa. And that's a good tackle on the play by Ricky Reynolds, who came up to meet the play, and they'll get about a yard to the 45-yard line. He was helped out by Kevin Murphy. Indianapolis offensively, Beasley. Take a look at this. Compared to the NFL average, and that's really where you see the numbers don't lie why they've only won one ball game. You know, if you've played 17 games, you get a real good test of what's going on. You see the touchdowns leaping out at you. Only 14 touchdowns for the Colts compared to an average of 31.7 league-wide. That tells it all. They will need a big play here on third down. Third down and 13 yards to go. Brooks in motion. Dumps it to Clark. To the 50, and chased down by Thomas. That's a loose football. And the Buccaneers have it at their own 45-yard line. Roger Jones looks to have picked up the fumble that was caused by Broderick Thomas. There was very good protection here, kind of a, almost like a shovel, a shuffle pass out to Clark. He makes a nice movement, but Broderick Thomas coming over the back with a big swat, batting that ball out, and it bounces around. You saw some defensive players actually try to pick it up. Look at the swat right there. Way to go, Thomas. First and 10 now for Vinny Testaverde in the Buccaneer offense. This is Wilson, the rookie fullback, and a good gain up to the Colt 46-yard line. Here's the offensive line. This offensive line, they feel, has just the last couple of weeks started to come together right now. Gruber, McHale, Mayberry, Beckles, and Taylor. 
Testaverde did not play last week because of a sore back. You just saw Wilson. Reggie Cobb's been playing well. Hall, Carrier, and a good rookie out of Florida State. Dossie, Lawrence Dossie. And then in the four wide set, Drury and Anderson come in. They are really hurting at the wide receiver spot because of injuries. Second down, less than one. Wilson again, first down. Let's meet the Colts' defense right now. A defense that was just steamrolled against Buffalo last week in a Sunday night game at the Hoosier Dome. Indianapolis defensively today, now playing on a short field at the 42-yard line. We'll get you their lineups on our next play. First down for Tampa Bay. They pick up a Ken Clark fumble. Roger Jones scooped it up, and here's Testaverde now. Tampa Bay trying to grab the early lead and turn in some points off an Indianapolis turnover. Our first look at Reggie Cobb. Lost his footing and turns it into a two-yard gain. He's brought down on the play by Eugene Daniel and John Baylor. Agee's a rookie out of Illinois. Siragusa in hand. Harad and Pickett are both playing with sore necks, but they're both in the lineup today. Harad's an outstanding linebacker. Goo, Daniel, Baylor, and Pryor. And then in the nickel package for Indianapolis, the Colts call in Alan Grant and Cornell Holloway. There's Jeff Harad, another linebacker who's upset about not being selected to the AFC. Pro Bowl team. Second down, Testaverde. He completes it. And it's Robert Wilson out of the backfield to the 35-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by close to three yards. Really working Wilson a lot early here. That's a bit of a surprise. They have been primarily been utilizing Cobb, but it has caught this Indianapolis defense off guard. He's making some good catches, making some good runs. And, you know, uh, the coach was saying that he should really be a senior right now in college. And that's what this team has been. It's perennially, almost every year, it's one of the youngest teams in the National Football League. And you've got a rookie carrying the bulk of the work right now. Testaverde has had an up-and-down season. He's really had an up-and-down career. He's been hot at times and ice cold at other times. Third down and two. Their four wide receiver set is into the game. Testaverde, Drury cannot hang on. And in fact, Alan Grant almost came up with a deflected interception. It's fourth down and two. Hey, and when you are two and 13, you go for it, don't you, Why Beasley? Why not go for it? And that's what the fans are here screaming. They're saying go, and it looks like they're leaving the offensive unit in there. That time, Benny tried to hit a quick out. He needs about two yards, yard and a half. He tried to hit a quick out just a little bit off the mark. Well, they are going to go for it. I get the feeling that's about the first sound of cheers that Richard Williamson has heard in this stadium in a long, long time. All right, fourth down. That's Dossie, the rookie in motion. A blitz by the Colts. And it is incomplete. Mike Pryor runs into the play and knocks the ball away from Lawrence Dossie. The Bucks fail on fourth down. Indianapolis ball when we come back. Scoreless. Along with Beasley Reese at Tampa Stadium, Indianapolis gets the ball back after they fumble, but then Tampa Bay can't turn over on a fourth down conversion. We have another injury on this offensive line at left tackle Irv Pankey has a sprained ankle. They don't know if he'll return. Look at the different numbers of tackles and guards they've had to use this year. That's incredible. <laughs> All because of injuries, Beasley. That is a nightmare, especially for Jeff George. And you know, we've done a lot of these games for Indianapolis, and he's talked a lot about the fact that there's been no consistency in the offensive line play. There are different guys lining up all the time. Very difficult to get some protection when you've got that problem, and that's the number one problem for Rick Venturi is injuries all year long. All right, here come the Colts out. First down at their own 34-yard line. Again, Tampa Bay missed on a fourth down pass to Lawrence Dossey. And the Colts get the ball back. Eric Dickerson is now in the backfield. Trying to shake off the flu. He'll get a yard to the 35, and that's it. Now let's check in on the Schick Tracer 10-minute ticker this afternoon. All right, that big, really a playoff game being played in Miami today. The winner of that game makes it as a wild-card team into the AFC playoff picture. 
No score yet from Joe Robbie Stadium. And we'll keep you up to date on all of that accounts of that game. Atlanta and Dallas tied 7-7 in the first quarter of play. No score from Pittsburgh and New England. Leading over Cincinnati 7-0. The Patriots trying to finish with a bang. 0-0 here at Tampa Stadium. Ken Clark is back into the lineup now. Dickerson goes out for the Colts. Second down nine. Clark hit right away by Ray Seals. What a story Ray Seals is. When you look on the Buccaneer roster, college, Ray Seals, none. He never went to college. Now take a look at the move here by Seals. Watch the hit. A little bit of, of a delay on the draw. There's Seals, 98, finishing it off. And, you know, every time he plays, he, he's had some injuries this year, but he always averages six or seven tackles per game when he is healthy. And like you said, he didn't even go to college. He played some semi-pro. He was out of football for a while, worked at places like Taco Bell, was a hotel doorman. I mean, those are great jobs, but a far cry from the NFL. It is third down and nine. Brooks in motion. George. Wide open across the middle, Sammy Martin. First down, Colts at the Buccaneer 45-yard line. And George, with a flick of the wrist, just rifled that ball right in there. There's something about this guy that's naturally gorgeous. As you see the curl route by Smith, that ball is right there, and it's there as he turns around. You know, Jeff George refuses to lift weights. You know, all these NFL teams have got these $100,000, $200,000 weight rooms. He won't touch a weight. He said he's never lifted weights. He didn't lift when he was uh, in high school, didn't lift in college, and now he's afraid to. He says he has natural arm strength, and that was a great example right there. 21-yard pass play, first down, Colts in Buck territory at the 46. Eric Dickerson, second carry of the day, and Ray Seals has it. See, he's all over the place. He's got the speed, the quickness, and that's what shocks everybody about this guy. I mean, how do you, what a find he was. And just that speed and quickness allowed him to chase the play from behind. And that's what the good ones do. Big Ray Seals. 290 pounds of Ray Seals. Look at him. He's on the right side of your screen, chasing, chasing. And there he is meeting Eric. When we uh, met with Ray Seals yesterday, he said, fellas, I got to break it off. I'm going over to my brand new gymnasium that it's opening up in a couple of weeks. Big health and fitness workout place. You know, the theme is train like the pros. I like that. Second down nine. <laughs> George with a lot of time, and it's tipped by Solomon. He tried to get it to his tight end, Pat Beach, down the field. Marty Carter almost ended up with the interception along with Tony Covington, but that was the man it was intended for, Beach. Let's take a look at this. This is a dangerous shot. You see some penetration up front. What extension! Great jump by her. Everybody's breaking at the ball. Look at all those white jerseys in the frame. That's what you look for if you're a defensive coordinator. And that was a good series right there for Tampa Bay. That's the first miss of the day for George. He's four for five now, 37 yards in passing. And he's also third down and nine to try and keep the drive going. Oh, they snapped the ball early. It hit him right in the belly. And it's Buccaneer ball. It's picked up by Tim Newton. Well, that's in true Reefus Ball fashion. Well, the Bucks are getting the breaks. There's no question about that. You know, sometimes you go on first sound. The quarterback will say, we'll line up and we'll go on first sound. He gave the sound. There was the snap. He wasn't ready for it. Unbelievable. Now you see it. Now you don't. We'll be right back. Scoop Sonata and the brand new Elantra. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. And by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome back to Tampa, everybody. Jim Donovan and Beasley Reese. Watch Baldinger hit George with a fastball right on the numbers. You know what? It was a great snap, so the obvious conclusion is that they were going on the first or second sound. George said a couple of things, and the ball came. It was picked up by Tim Newton on a fumble. Two fumbles in the game for the Colts. Reggie Cobb is trapped and brought down by John Hand, and he'll probably lose a yard back to the 48-yard line. Well, again, as we tell you, the numbers do not lie at all. They don't lie at all. When you have a poor record, you probably turn the ball over a lot. And yes, both of these teams do. Second down, 10 at the 49-yard line. Testaverde dumps out of the backfield. 
Reggie Cobb is brought down by Chris Good at the 49-yard line. Yeah, that was very good pursuit. They're going to like a, a hurry-up type of offense. Benny taking what the defense gives him here. Very smart. But look at when the defense converges. Look at the, look at the jerseys. Four jerseys. Now, Indianapolis did look a bit disheveled now as they did not get a chance to get different personnel on the field. Defensively, no huddle. And the Bucks up on third down and seven. A lot of time, and Testaverde throws. That's going to be intercepted. Johnny Baylor, his fourth of the year, to the 50 and to the Buccaneer 45-yard line. A deflected ball. It was knocked first by Mike Fryer, and Testaverde is picked off for the 13th time this season. You know, you take a look at this, and this man is well covered. You've got Dwayne in front. You've got safeties everywhere else. You've got people converging. And that is what Benny has done so many times. That wasn't a good throw. Three turnovers already in the game. Colts ball when we come back. Take a look at Benny here and take a look. This is right after the interception. He's looking around. They're talking. It's like they're trying to get something straight. It's like maybe he wanted somebody to go out instead of come in. We'll see. The interception by John Baylor. His fourth of the year. And the ball is at the Tampa Bay 45. George has trouble with his footing going back on the drop, and he throws, and it should have been intercepted by Broderick Thomas. And if he had been able to hang on to the football, he was gone because there wasn't a blue shirt in sight. Broderick Thomas promised us a big day today. Now, his wide receiver, Jeff George's wide receiver, slipped down on this play, and Broderick, had Broderick not have gotten it, the corner would have gotten it. So I tell you, that they're lucky there. Roderick Thomas said somebody must pay That's for, what he not, said. Uh, for not voting for him <laughs> to go to the Pro Bowl. Unfortunately today, I guess he's going to take it out on the Colts. And they had nothing to do with it. Second down, 10. A minute 43 to go, first quarter in a game of turnovers. George has got a man wide open. It's Jesse Hester. And Hester, with good speed, brings it all the way down to the Tampa Bay 26-yard line where Jesse Solomon brings him down from behind. 18 yards. That's what uh, Hester does so well. He catches the ball, and then what he does with it after the catch, that's what's special. I mean, a lot of people can run this little stop-in route right here. Now watch this. Comes straight across. Now, explosion. That when he leans inside, it's like he's turning the corner on a 220. That's that's where he really makes his money. Six Buccaneers chase him down on the play. First down, Indianapolis at the 26 of Tampa Bay. Tim Minow and Ken Clark are the running backs. Dickerson's been in and out of the lineup here today. He's run the ball twice. George with plenty of time. Throws for Clark. Overthrown in the end zone. All right, once again, let's check in on the Schick Tracer, 10-minute ticker. Still no score in that game between the Jets and Miami. The winner goes to the playoffs. The loser is out. Atlanta and Dallas, two big plays in that one. Chris Miller, a big touchdown pass. Steve Berline, a big touchdown pass. Nothing from Pittsburgh. Cincinnati's tied up the Patriots 7-7. It was Boomer Esiason to Rodney Holman, 21 yards for a touchdown. Now, take a look at Jeff George here now. You know, what really, now he's been sacked 88 times. But what about the number of times he's been, you know, taken to the ground, pop after the throw? Those hits and those hurries, the pressures, they really bother a quarterback. Second down, 10. He said it takes him until Friday each week to physically recover from the last game. He's looking for Brooks, and he runs out of field. Down at the two-yard line. Well, that time they attacked the number one defensive back on this football team, just elected captain. That's Ricky Reynolds, and man, he can play some one-on-one -on -one defense. He can play with anybody. Look at there. There's another one. Another I mean, man. Why, I wouldn't play quarterback. I mean, geez, every time you get hit, I don't care if you throw it. I don't care if you hand it off. They try to hit you. It's third down and ten as he's gone up top two times in a row now, and he's put himself in a tough situation. He's two for four on third down conversions today. They're at the Tampa Bay 26-yard line and a shotgun formation. Four wide receivers in the game for the Colts. And a high snap. And a quick toss, and Clarence Burdan is chased down on the play by Roger Jones, who already has recovered a fumble here today. And Indianapolis will attempt a field goal. 
Boy, I tell you, he did good just to hang on to that thing. Look how he just flicks it. It's like he's got a sidearm thing that he does. It allows him to get rid of the ball very quickly. Dean Biasucci is in to attempt the field goal. The spot will come with Ron Stark, the holder, at the 29-yard line. So he'll make it a 39-yard attempt. Biasucci is 14 out of 25 so far this season. But it looks like time has run out here in the first quarter, and it has. So they ice Dean Biasucci, and we'll have to wait to see if he can give the Colts the first points of the game when we come back. BC NFL doubleheader today. Big game, Kansas City at L.A. The winner of that game will end up with home field in the wild card game next week, and they'll play each other next week, too, in the opening round of the playoffs. Kansas City and the Raiders, two teams that have quarterback problems as they go to the playoffs. Biasucci. In a 0-0 game after one quarter, will attempt a 39-yard field goal. He's two for three within this distance. And he is right down the middle and good, and the Indianapolis Colts jump out to the early lead. 3-0 Indianapolis. We'll be right back to Tampa Stadium after this timeout. Turns the Johnny Baylor interception into a field goal. They lead 3-0. Biasucci kicks his 15th of the season. A 39-yard shot to give the Colts a 3-0 lead. Back deep, Willie Drury was the deep man. Now they've changed it, and Gary Anderson is back deep, standing back at his goal line, awaiting the Biasucci kick. 3-0 Colts just started here in the second quarter. In fact, the field goal was the first play in our second quarter. Anderson will take it at the three. And he is brought down at the 23-yard line. Perkins, Bruce Perkins, is in and on the tackle. Now, once again, if Indianapolis beats Tampa Bay here today, they will end up with the number one and two picks in the draft. The only other time that that ever happened was 1958. The Chicago Cardinals had the two top picks in the draft. With the number one pick, they went for King Hill. There he is. With the number two pick, they went with John David Crow, now the athletic director at Texas A&M. And who knows, at the end of this afternoon, an Indianapolis win might give them that exact situation. First down, Reggie Cobb takes the pitch. And Cobb brings it out to the 27-yard line, brought down on the play by Jeff Harrod. Let's check in. Brad Baxter has scored for the New York Jets in that big game down in Miami. The winner goes to the playoffs. Jets lead 7-0. Buffalo on top, 7-0. Dallas has jumped ahead of Atlanta, 14-7. Pittsburgh with a Gary Anderson field goal leads over Cleveland. And they're tied at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, the Patriots and Bengals. And the Colts lead here 3-0 over Tampa Bay. Testaverde was intercepted for the 14th time today. It led to an Indianapolis field goal. Second down, Reggie Cobb. He runs right into Jeff Harrod. And Beasley, the more I see Jeff Harrod, the more I believe he should be a pro bowler, too. You know, he's, he has always been a high-production guy. And you take a look at the surge here. He snuffs this thing out immediately. And in the pursuit of this defense, look at everybody coming in there. Baylor. There's people coming from everywhere. And that's why you know, there's Wayne Bickett standing over the thing. And that's, the, you know, that's what you want. When you're a defensive coordinator, you want to look at a pitcher and say, we had three guys and another two guys coming in making the tackle. Third down at six. And Testaverde goes into a shotgun. And he's looking long. And it's incomplete. Carrier is the intended receiver. Testaverde is pleading for a flag. He felt the carrier was locked up and tied up going down that far sideline. And Richard Williamson does not get the flag. And instead, the Bucks must punt. Johnny Baylor was on the coverage with Pryor. So we'll see Mark Royals for the first time today. Let's take and see if we can figure out whether or not he was interfered with. There are the athletes. I don't really see them. I think they're contending that Baylor might have had his hand on his shoulder running down the field. Royals will hit it from his own 12-yard line. Clarence Verdan is back deep for Indianapolis. Good defensive series for it. the Colts. This is very returnable. Here's Verdan from inside his 30. He 
kind of ducked underneath the pursuit. There's a flag down as he carries it out to the 40-yard line. So it was about a 12-yard return. Daryl Fullington was in on the tackle. 45-yard punt by Royals, but there was a late flag that went down. You know, that's the, uh, that's the first penalty that we've had. And it goes against Indianapolis. So we've had three turnovers up until this point. It was a relatively well-played game when it comes to infractions. We have an illegal block in the back, number 56, on the return team, on the return. Brian Jones, the linebacker, is flagged for the penalty. Indianapolis leads, and we'll be back to see what they can do as they have the football. 3-0 Colts, back to Tampa in a moment. Picture on this final Sunday of the NFL. Buffalo is the number one seed. Houston lost a critical game yesterday, so if Denver wins this afternoon at San Diego, they would get the bye and home field in the opening round of the playoffs. The Raiders in Kansas City play later today to see who gets home field in their playoff game next week. And Miami and the Jets, the Jets lead that game and would get the playoff spot with a win. The loser of that game is out. First down, George goes long and deep. Trying to get it to Bill Brooks down at the 50-yard line, and it's incomplete. Over on the NFC side, Washington is the number one seed. They go all the way through. Chicago can win their division today with a law with a uh, tomorrow if they win tomorrow night in their Monday night game. Detroit is losing today. Now, if Detroit lost, the Bears could get the division by virtue of that loss today by the Lions. Atlanta is losing. They could win their division with a win today, but they're losing in Dallas. Second down and 10 after the incompleted George pass. Now Indianapolis has totally gone away from running the football. Nine of their last 10 plays have been passing plays. George throws incomplete. He got hit as he threw. And it was Kevin Murphy, the linebacker, who came and hit George just as he threw the football. Broderick Thomas is talking to Jeff George. He's asking him, can you believe I didn't make it to the Pro Bowl? <laughs> and watch the trouble that he gets in here as he feels the pocket start to collapse and people are all over him. That's Keith McCants that he has draped around his neck. And you know, you brought up a good question. All of a sudden, they're just passing. I mean, they opened up this game. They were making a lot of money just straight up the gut like a lot of people have done against Tampa Bay. It's third and ten. They haven't gained an inch on this drive. Two incompleted passes. George again looking long. Verdan can't run to the ball at the 37. Roger Jones was on the coverage for Tampa Bay. And here it is once again. You've got good man-for-man -man coverage. Talk about a highway that's been out there all alone. And a super job ball overthrown. Ron Stark is in to punt for the Colts. A reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be presenting the Avis We Try Harder Award, which will be given to the game's MVP. Willie Drury is standing back at his 25-yard line. The Colts lead 3-0 on a 39-yard field goal by Dean Biasucci. And from his 23, here's Drury. Just got belted at the 43-yard line. Tony Walker made the tackle as Drury had a good head of steam. We'll be right back to Tampa in a moment. Good. Now I can go to bed. Um, wait a minute. I want to give you a gift while we're alone. Something just for you. A washer and dryer? <laughs> Come on, will you be serious? Okay. Um, close your eyes. Merry Christmas. This Christmas, give her the gift of love. Diamonds. In the right hands, even the most functional things can be art. So we asked a sculptor to design a new luxury sedan. The Mazda 929. And while it offers a generous list of safety features and amenities to comfort both mind and body, its richest rewards are for the soul. The new 929. The first luxury sedan from the new Mazda. It just feels right. Uh, I was afraid to go to the doctor. I didn't want to hear that I might have an ulcer, but I just couldn't ignore my stomach. 
you can imagine how relieved I was when my doctor said, my lanta. He told me it wasn't an ulcer. It was indigestion. And indigestion like mine needed a strong medicine. My lanta is strong medicine. Strongly recommended. In fact, my lanta is the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said my lanta. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By the Diamond Tennis Bracelet. This Christmas, give her the gift of love. Diamonds. By Mylanta, the antacid doctors recommend most. And by Hewlett Packard. Keep those ideas coming and we'll keep making them look their best. All right. I say take off those bags and be counted, Beasley. <laughs> Oh, man, that's, you know, that's what happens when you're having a bad season. Fans are having a lot of fun with it, but to Vinny and the boys, it's not funny at all. <laughs> First and 10 now, 44-yard line. That was a nice return by Willie Drury. 21 yards, Testaverde, a deflected pass. They had a screen set up for Reggie Cobb. Syracuse knocked it down. Let's go back to New York right now and check in with Bob. Jim battled for the last playoff spot in the league, not just in the AFC. Only one up for grab between the Jets and Miami. And Brad Baxter will go over from a yard out, capping a long jet drive. 15 plays, 64 yards. They kept the ball for eight and a half minutes early in the second. Jets, seven. Dolphins, nothing. Jim? Thank you, Bob. Three nothing here. Indianapolis over Tampa Bay. Second it's second down at 10. Testaverde really threw... A very tentative ball out there to Reggie Cobb. They had a screen set up, and he allowed Syracuse, the nose tackle, to get up and knock the ball down. Second down, 10. And he fires it across the middle, and it's dropped. Mark Carrier cannot hang on. So that's four in a row that Testaverde has not connected on. But I'll have to tell you what, I think the Carrier should have had that one as we check the starter, 10-minute ticker. Bob just told you what happened in that Jets-Miami game. Now Atlanta has tied up that game in Dallas 14-14. They win their division with a win today. Pittsburgh still leading. And Cincinnati and New England tied at 7-7. Chris Miller threw that pass to Andre Risen in that game between Atlanta and Dallas to tie the game. You can take a look here. That's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. He's got to catch that, turn up, and go. Can't yeah. blame that on Ben. Very catchable ball. Third down, 10. Incomplete again. Try to force that one in there. And you know, you see Vinny's reaction. He's turning to the referee, so I think he's more upset with the possibility that his player was interfered with. And we'll take a look at straight man-for-man -man coverage here, and that's what Vinny was arguing about. The guy was almost mugged. You know, you can do that if you're within five yards. The question is, was he beyond the mark? Look at Vinny. He's upset. Chris Goode was on the coverage there of Lawrence Dossie. Verdan is deep to take back this Royals punt. And Royals completely mishits it. And it bounces through Verdan at the 16. He'll reverse his field. A late flag goes down as Verdan goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line. I mean a very, very late flag. Royals had been that, that we are at least 10 stories up off the field here and that one sounded bad from up here I really did and Verdan ran forever a block in the back again called against Indianapolis the second such penalty called against them today so they will end up with bad field position as the flag was thrown down by the 50. We have an illegal block in the back. Number 31 on the return team. On the run back. Half the distance to the goal. Michael Ball. We'll be right back. The Colts will have the ball inside their own 10. It was a pretty good return by Verdan, too. They lead 3 nothing. There's a big sense of pride in owning a company. I think customers have noticed the change in the company and the change in us. We've got this 24-hour hotline in case something happens while you're out on the road. If you're in a hurry, we've added extra buses to get you in and out fast. We want to make sure that our customers see uh, that we can provide them with the type of service that they expect and deserve. We love to make people happy. That's a part of our business, keep you coming back. We want to see them back at our counter again many times. So why rent from anyone but an owner? 
tell your boss you're quitting? No, I'm telling him on Monday. Got any plans yet? A few? No celebrity spokesman. I'm opening a restaurant. No beach volleyball games. How about another Heineken? No lengthy description of the brewing process. None of that is what made Heineken the number one imported beer in America. You got that steady paycheck? Oh, yeah. I got a few bucks put away. So you want to own a restaurant? No, what I really want to do is be a relief pitcher. <laughs> when the Mazda Miata first came along, it was like nobody else's baby. But then it was designed to be different. Now the Miata will be joined by five new Mazda cars, like the MX-3 Sports Coupe with the only V6 in its class and the 929 luxury sedan with dual airbag standard. Cars as pure and personal as the Miata. Designed to be different? You bet. The Miata was just the beginning. New Year's Day, Ohio State takes on Syracuse in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Then number six Penn State battles 10th ranked Tennessee in the Fiesta Bowl. And it's a primetime showdown that will determine the national championship as number one Miami battles Big 8 champion Nebraska at the Federal Express Orange Bowl. New Year's Day on NBC. Well, Jeff George Beasley has certainly shot to the head of the class in Colts history. Ahead of some pretty good names. Look at what he's done. Look at it. Hurt Jones, Johnny Unitas, that, that's almost blasphemous to, to go ahead of Johnny U, but Jeff George has certainly got a lot of talent, and boy, he's on his way to a fine career. They need to get him some help, though. They're inside their 10. Dickerson runs it out 10 to the 12, and he's brought down there. Murphy is in on the tackle, along with Tony Covington, who kind of tipped him over striking Dickerson down by the uh, feet and knocking him off his pins. And so you wonder about Eric Dickerson and what his future is going to be with the Indianapolis Colts. I get the impression yeah. that if Rick Venturi gets the head coaching job... There'll be a problem. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> think... I think that the way to solve the problem is that Dickerson would leave. Probably so. You know, we asked him about uh, his uh, star running back, and Rick Venturi said he had no comment. Didn't want to talk about it. Of course, he suspended him a few weeks ago. When he said that Dickerson did not participate in practice the way he wanted him to. Just a one in a long list of problems that Dickerson has had since he went to the Colts. Second down. And George has got Hester. First down, out near the 28-yard line. Now, this was a matchup problem from the start. When Broderick Thomas was pointing around. He got stuck on a wide receiver man for man. And that kind of just got everything was off from the beginning there. And they got it to Hester. That's a smart play by a young quarterback to look around the field, find the mismatch, and get it to that guy. 15 yards on the play. Two good plays between George and Hester. Hester having a good season again. He had a fantastic year last year with Indianapolis as he got himself back into football after being totally out of the game. This is Dickerson. Runs it so smoothly out to the 36-yard line. There's a loose ball on the field. Tampa Bay says they have it. Jesse Solomon has the football down on the field. As it spills away from Dickerson. Just take a look at the run. This is what Eric does so well. He's got a lot of room. Hits it hard. And look who's there. That's Keith McCants with the big hand wrapping it in there to pull the ball out. And once again... Tampa Bay gets an opportunity. This is the third fumble by Indianapolis. And every time, Tampa Bay has not come up and responded by putting some points on the board. Here's a better look at it. You see Keith trailing from the back. Look at that left arm. Right on the football and the pull. Yeah, it's out of there. It's out it's of there out before of his knee came down. And they did take a look at it. And it didn't take them long to decide. Nope. Dickerson to the sideline. Three fumbles today, his first of the day. And Tampa Bay trailing 3-0 with 10-13 to go in the first half. Gets the ball in their best starting field position at the 38. Reggie Cobb is trapped. What a fine play by Johnny Baylor. The defense for the Indianapolis Colts has been excellent. The pursuit has been beautiful. They have snuffed out everything. Got a little backside pull from the guards, but look at that. Baylor didn't buy any of it. Loss of five yards on the play. Second down and 15. 
Four turnovers already in the game. And Testaverde in a big situation now, second and 15. Looks incomplete for Cobb inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. And there's John Baylor again. Baylor already has an interception today. Baylor's all over the place. That, that one was catchable. You know, Vinny stood in there. He said he got good protection. Put the ball right on the hands, but, you know, Baylor was right there with the simultaneous hit, and that makes it real tough. Take a look at the blocking there. He gets some time this time. He puts it there, but, you know, sometimes you have to say good defensive play. Look at Baylor with his hands in between the arms of the receiver and knocking it out. Look at those numbers. Eight yards passing on the day. Third and 15. Incomplete. Eugene Daniel comes in and knocks the ball away. We go to New York right now for an update. Here's Bob. Okay, Jim. Patriots at Cincinnati. Esiason trailing 7-0. Evens it up with this touchdown pass to Rodney Holman. Tied at 7. Early second quarter in Cincy. Jim. There's for them. 3-0 Indianapolis leading over Tampa Bay. Nine and a half to go in the first half. Vinny Testaverde just heard a strong, strong chorus of boos as he threw another incompleted pass. Royals to punt, almost blocked. He gets it away into the end zone. That was Robert Hardy, who was elected special teams captain the other day, a rookie free agent that made it with the Bucks. Testaverde to the sideline, not much is going right. In the right hands, even the most functional things can be art. So we asked a sculptor to design a new luxury sedan, the Mazda 929. And while it offers a generous list of safety features and amenities to comfort both mind and body, its richest rewards are for the soul. The new 929, the first luxury sedan from the new Mazda. It just feels right. The power of a resource essential to all. At GTE, we provide that power. With telephone systems and services central to the life of a community. The well-being of families. The needs of every business. Great or small. GTE Telephone Services. We give you the power to flourish in any environment. At GTE, the power is on. For the first time ever, you can catch every punch, every stroke, and every dash of the Olympics. Because now, in addition to NBC coverage, you've got the power to choose between different Olympic events on three cable channels. Call 1-800-OLYMPIC for the Olympics triple cast of the 92 Summer Games and catch every moment. Catch the fire behind the flame. stocking stuffer from NBC Sports coming up on Christmas Day. Two great NBA games. First at 3 Eastern time, the Lakers and Clippers. That battle for L.A. Then at 9 o'clock, Boston and Chicago. Larry versus Michael. Enough said. What a day of NBA basketball here on NBC. The Colts run on first down. Eric Dickerson carries out four yards to the 24. Kevin Murphy tackles him on the play. And it will be second down and six for Indianapolis. Well, Beasley, what do you do here in this ball game? Total yardage. Indianapolis only has three points to show for all of that. But Tampa Bay, Testaverde with eight yards passing in the game. You know, he hasn't been able to connect, but a lot of it has been uh, the fact that nobody's open. I mean, he's throwing into tight coverages where you got to really credit the Indianapolis defense for the struggle that Vinny's going through right now. Dickerson is hit in the backfield. Gerald Nichols, the nose tackle, came in and made the play. You know, you can tell, oh, Gerald Nichols just drove right through. Just a good power surge. Eric never had a chance. 
All right, it is third down and nine at the 21-yard line. Jeff George, a couple of times, has been able to connect with Jesse Hester for good passing yardage, but that's been about it for him, too. He's gone to Verdan and Brooks a couple of times long, but has overthrown each time. 3-0 Indianapolis. The Bucks showing blitz, and here they come. The ball is caught, but it's short of the first down. Jesse Hester again, and he's brought down at the 28-yard line. Ricky Reynolds flew over the top along with Marty Carter. And take a look at this. Count of a one-on-one -on -one coverage. Look at the, the free safety converging there. That's just a super charge, a super charge. And he saved the first down. So Ron Stark is in again. Second punt of the day. And that's Willie Drury back deep for the Buccaneers. 7.24 to go here in the first half. 3-0 Indianapolis on a 39-yard field goal by Dean Biasucci. Drury makes the catch at the 32. And falls at the 43-yard line. Mike Pryor is down on the stop. Now let's check the starter, 10-minute ticker this afternoon. The Jets leading in that big game, 7-0. The winner goes to the playoffs. Buffalo leads Detroit 7-0. Dallas leads 24-14. Alexander Wright took a kickoff back 103 yards for a touchdown, the longest in Dallas history. Pittsburgh leading, and Cincinnati and New England tied at 7 in the second quarter of play. First to 10, Tampa Bay, Vinny Testaverde has had a horrible day throwing the football. Eight yards passing in the game. From his own 42. He's got his man. That's the rookie, Dossie. And he carries for a buck first down. You know, it took four people to bring him down that time. And that's what they love about Lawrence. Crowd finally getting involved in his game. Look at that. It took four people to bring him down. Boy, he's great after the catch. That's a standing ovation because the Bucs completed a pass and got a first down. No huddle offense. And they're inside Colt territory. Testaverde is intercepted and dropped by Dwayne Bickett. Now, see, that's what people don't understand around here. He had Reggie Cobb wide open right down the middle. A simple play. He goes to a man where you've got a big, rangy, six-foot-five Dwayne Bickett standing in front of him, and if he could catch, he'd be running right now. Well, Testaverde went from a standing ovation to a sitting boo. Second down, 10. And he's got a man across the middle. Carrier, first down, Bucks. Well, talk about up and down. Yeah. I mean, that was a major league fastball. That's a perfect strike. Same scenario. There's Bickett again. But this time, he's got so much stuff on this ball, nobody could get to it. What a throw and a good, courageous catch. First down. Deflected ball, and it kicked off. And here goes Jeff Harrod. To the 43-yard line now from ovation back to booze. He's up, and then he's down, and then he's up again, and you know what? It just gets deflected. It's deflected. Harad makes the great catch like a wide receiver. He put those big paws up there, pulled it in, and then he turns into fullback and drags a couple of people. Jeff Harad is quite a player. Talked to us yesterday, really upset. Feels like he should be going to Hawaii he in a should. couple of weeks. And I think he should. And I think he should also. Look at the tackles. 149 tackles. No wonder he's got a sore neck. Dickerson takes it outside. Covington almost had him for a loss, but Dickerson got away and ran it for a couple of yards out over the 40-yard line. Man, you go back to Jeff Harrod, and that guy makes just tons of tackles. He flies to the ball all day long. He is the epitome of an inside linebacker. He's all over the place. You know, of course, the scheme is set up where, you know, people they, they keep people off of him so he can roam. But uh, when you, you can tell how great, how much athletic ability he has when you watch him catch a ball like that and take off running. I mean, he's a guy that should be in the Pro Bowl and probably would be if Indianapolis was winning more games. Second down and eight. At the 45, the Colts leading 3-0. 5-15 to go in the half. 
Oh, Jesse Hester tried to make the catch at the 42-yard line, and it's incomplete as George was blitzed again by the Bucks defense. And you want to see what it's like to play man for man? Take a look at this. That's good body position. It's a great break. You saw the ball was in the air before the receiver broke. So as Hester swung his head around to locate and get his adjustment to hone it in, he just couldn't get it done. But it was a good throw, good everything. Paul Tagliabue's signature was going right by his face <laughs> as soon as he turned around. That's the way you want it, though. I mean, if you're a receiver, you want the ball coming before you break, but you don't want to have to wait and get belted. Two for seven on third down conversions for Indianapolis today. And a third down and eight right now. A lot of time for George. And it's incomplete to Bill Brooks at the Buck 49-yard line. They had two wide receivers in the same spot. Clark and Brooks were in the same spot, and that brought a lot of defenders there, too. That, yeah, that draws a little attention. They kind of talked about it. You know, hey, guy, you should have broke out when I broke in, or whatever the problem was. Well, I'll tell you what. Our punters today could end up as co-winners of the Avis We Try Harder Award, because we're going to see a lot of them here this afternoon. stays away from it it goes to the 31 yard line Jesse Anderson looks like he's the man that got in front of the block and knocked down the stark punt here it is Beasley watch if it's Anderson left footed punter and the block coming from the from right to left which is the perfect place perfect angle take a look he beats he beats the defenders immediately lays out perfectly I mean, that's like a textbook. That's the way they teach it in special teams meetings. So Jesse Anderson blocks the Stark punt. But the punt still went forward all the way down to the Tampa Bay 31-yard line. And Reggie Cobb runs it over the 35, and he falls at the 36-yard line. You know, when we spoke to Reggie Cobb, he was telling us he does not get discouraged when things are not going for him. He feels like he needs to get the ball 25, 30 times a game, and if he does that, he thinks at some point he'll break one. He almost got loose that time. Five yards on first down. Second down now. 4.20 to go in the first half. Incomplete. Now, Mark Carrier, Beasley, was not open on that play. Wayne Bickett was sitting there right on top of 88 Mark Carrier, and yet Chester Verde put the ball there. Well, we can only hope that he looked over, recognized it, and then threw it away by throwing it into the ground and two or three yards in front of him. Look at those stats. That's not a good day. Two interceptions, of course, you know, you had to tip the bounces, but still, he's got to get something going. So it's third and five. He's flushed a bit, and he gets Dawsey. First down, Bucks at the 49-yard line. Lawrence Dawsey, a good-looking rookie, and Testaverde finds him. You know, I was talking to Richard Williamson about Testaverde, and he said that, that Vinny needs to be able to move around and make some plays. And that's exactly what he does that time. The pocket's breaking down. He steps up, finds a little more room, using that athletic ability to power the ball in there. That's what he's got to do. He's got to make plays. 14 yards on that pass to Dawsey. First down at the Tampa Bay 49-yard line. They trail 3-0. And they give it to Cobb on a delay, and he'll get a yard to midfield. John Baylor and John Hand team up for the tackle of Reggie Cobb. Well, he wants the ball 25 times, and yes, he does. so far he's been getting it sparingly today. Seven rushes, seven yards. That's a very easy average to figure out. And that's all he got on that carry, too, was a yard. Second and nine. Testaverde looks long, and Carrier is out of bounds at the 28-yard line, and the ball was well overthrown. Well, Vinny has really taken a beating in his career. I mean, he, when we sit on a tie, he's like a guy that's, that's in a vacuum, and there's a heavy vibration in his head. He, he, he's uncomfortable. He's talking about, you know, what, he's, what he has to do, what he takes from the media. He's a guy that's looking inward at his faith a little bit to, to give himself a little psychological stability. 
He wants to prove that he can do all the things that he's been touted to be able to do. Rough day today so far. Third and nine. They're one for six on third down conversions. Trouble with the snap. And a pretty good rush by the Colts. But he gets his man at the 41-yard line, and that's Drury. A very, very important spot here. They put him up near the 40-yard line, and that should give them a first down. Well, Vinny ran up there to help him out with the spot. And once again, this is what Vinny has to do. Okay, everything doesn't work perfectly here. It's not like you draw it up, but he did. He went and made a play, and that's what Richard's looking for. That's what Hugh Culverhouse is looking for, is for Vinny to just make some plays. That was a great play. So it's a first down. They're in Indianapolis territory with 2.25 remaining. Could it be Richard Williamson's last game as head coach of the Bucs here today? Only two wins this year. A great pocket, and he throws long. Incomplete at the five-yard line, and then it gets tipped and kept in the air, and Mike Pryor has it. And brings it out to the 15-yard line. Eugene Daniel tipped it. And Pryor, an ex-Buccaneer, gets the interception. You know, what do you say about this? You see this every Sunday in the National Football League. A quarterback says, I've got an athlete. You've got one. I'm going to throw it up and see who gets it. He gets a bad bounce. That's what's been happening to Vinny. We'll be back. Vinny simply continues. This is interception number three. All three were tipped or bounced. This time he's got good protection. He's able to step and deliver. It's a little bit short, a little bit high to the inside, but you know how unlucky is this guy? That happens every Sunday. Sometimes your athlete comes up with the ball. Sometimes it bounces back to your athlete, but it never happens that way for Vinny. You know, we talked to him. He said that if they make another drastic change, maybe another head coaching change, he wouldn't he wouldn't be bashful about asking to get out of here. Maybe he needs some new scenery and a new kind of luck. Two minutes to go in the half. Indianapolis has the ball at the 15-yard line. George is in trouble. Broderick Thomas hit him, and they're going to rule this ball down. Even though the Bucks recover, they're going to say that his arm was in the throwing motion. Solomon is the man that batted the ball, but it will be Indianapolis ball. They rule that it's an incompleted pass as Broderick Thomas is the man that hits George. Now take a look at Broderick on the right side. He forces, look at this. He makes the, the pocket collapse completely. You know, he told us he was going to be all over the place. He's trying to set some Buccaneer records. Buccaneers lobbying for a touchdown in the end zone, but nobody's buying it. It was a forward pass, and Broderick is doing everything he said he would do. Now, they're going to uh, take a look at the play again, but from what I just saw here on our replay... All right, they are going to review it. I saw his arm moving forward. That's what Bill Brooks is saying to the referee, okay, Bernie Cooper. Let's, let's take a closer look. You see it collapsing? Was he stepping forward? Tell you what, that's close. The, I, I think that's too close to change things. This is a better look. I think it was going forward. See, yep. uh, there's a, you know, you can say that he was right in the middle of the change of direction. You know, like for golf, he'd be at the very top of the backswing, about to change directions there. So, I don't know, I, I, it's too close to change. You know, they say indisputable. And I don't believe that, that there's without, you know, argument there. Rick Fintari, head coach of the Colts, he has only been able to deliver one win since taking over for Ron Meyer. All right, here it is again, Beasley. Broderick Thomas throws Vanderpool right past George. See, it's almost like he's at the top of the backswing. I see what you mean now. You see yes. my point? Yeah, I do. When he makes the swat. So, I mean, it could be reversed. I wouldn't be surprised, but normally when it's that close of a call, they will not reverse. Have you ever thought of um, going into a legal career? Well, you know. Very, very <laughs> persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> Venturi is saying, come on, forget it, let's go. Bring him up to the line of scrimmage, but they're taking an extra look at this one. There's Richard Williamson. All right, here's the call. We do have a reversal, however. Wait, he's saying, he's saying however. However, the whistle blew. 
Consequently, it goes back to the offensive team at the spot of the whistle. This way. So at the spot of the fumble, and once again, controversy rules when it comes to this replay system. Normally, when it's this close, they won't make the change. Now, I have no problem with the change because you can clearly see there that it's at the top and not exactly going forward. At the 10-yard line, second down. It should be Buck's ball. This is Ken Clark out of the backfield. Catches out to the 20. And a good safe play by Jeff George. Tony Covington, the rookie safety, makes the tackle. Again, what happened is there was a reversal, but a whistle blew. Right. So the play was dead. A minute 35 remaining, a timeout on the field. And uh, let's take a look at the 10-minute ticker right now. The starter 10-minute ticker shows us in that big game in Miami, the Jets still leading on that Brad Baxter touchdown. Frank Reich has thrown a touchdown pass. He's playing quarterback for the Bills to Andre Reid, 7-0. A wild game in Dallas. The Cowboys leading. Matt Stover has kicked a field goal for Cleveland to tie that game up in Pittsburgh. And the Patriots and Bengals are even at 7-7. Coming up at halftime, the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report, which will include a Derek Thomas feature with a holiday feeling as Derek works with kids. He does a great program in Kansas City. When we were out there earlier this season, he reads to kids on Saturdays. As a matter of fact, he couldn't talk to us. Remember, too long, he said, That's i got to right. get down to the library and, and that read, is, to, read to the kids. That is so important, the work that a lot of NFL players do, but especially when it comes to going to the school, sitting with the kids and talking to them about the importance of reading and education. He's, he's one of the great guys in the NFL. Third down and five for the Colts. And the Bucks with an all-out blitz. Solomon was coming. He got hit as he threw, did George, but he got the ball away. Keith McCants hit George just as he threw the ball, and the Bucks defense gets a roar. Keith McCants is bathing in the beauty of the play. He was a uh, number one choice at linebacker, moved to defensive end, and you see why. He's got the speed, he's got the size, and look at that dance. That's a new one. <laughs> That's a brand new one there. I don't know what you call that. I remember the last punt was blocked. That Stark tried to get off. Jesse Anderson got it. And Stark got this one away. Drury, a fair catch called for at the 42-yard line. And that's where the Bucks get it. With a minute 21 remaining here in the first half. 37-yard punt by Stark, who had to get it out of there in a hurry because Tampa Bay had some pretty good heat. Now, Vinny Testaverde reports back to the Bucks offensive huddle. The numbers are horrible, they really are. His year has been bad. It was really a shame to sit and talk to him yesterday because this guy was once one of the hot prospects, a Heisman Trophy winner out of Miami. And maybe you're right, Beasley, maybe the best thing would be for him to get a change of scenery. He seems a bit burned out on Tampa Bay's Buccaneers. And he'll throw this one into the Colts bench. Listen to this. This is going to be grounding, too. Intentional grounding. Sam Clancy was right in his face, and Chester Verde just got it out of there. We have intentional grounding on number 14. Lost it down at the spot. This is as bad a first half as I have seen a quarterback have this year. Yeah, he, he's really struggling. He is really You know, you can throw it out of bounds when you don't have something, when you're not in immediate. He is in imminent danger and just slings it. Look, at the left side of the field, there's nobody over there whatsoever, and that's the reason for the call. This is, you know, it's tough to watch Vinny go through this. It's tough to watch anybody go through this when you realize the pressure I mean, the media in this town is throwing bombs at this guy, bombs at this organization. I think what they are discussing with the replay booth right now is where the spot of the ball is at the 22-yard line. As they explained to Richard Williamson on the sideline, 
You know, I'm wondering, Beasley, do you pull him at the end of the first half? And the him I'm referring to is Testaverde. They went with Carlson last week when Testaverde had a bad back. Gary Anderson makes the catch at the 31 and gets out of bounds to get another yard to the 32. It looks like they will walk it up. And it will be third down, third down and 20 to go. And the ball is at the 32-yard line with a minute nine remaining in the first half. The only points in the game, a 39-yard field goal by Dean Biasucci. And Richard Williamson is not having a good day on the Tampa Bay sidelines if you're trying to hold on to your job. Testaverde steps up and completes it to Drury. First down, Bucks at the 45 on third and 20. And the Bucks call a timeout. For all the negative things that Vinny, you know, that's happened to Vinny today, he has made some plays. I mean, when you talk about making a third and 20, man, that's amazing. He moves around, finds a guy, and sticks it right between the numbers. I mean, that's the Vinny everybody's looking for. Unfortunately, the rap has been inconsistent. All right. This is doubleheader day, Beasley. Uh, yes. NBC, Kansas City, and the L.A. Raiders are getting set out in the Coliseum. That's coming up next. The bigness of that ball game is this. The winner of that game will end up with home field in the wild card playoff game in the AFC playoffs next week. And they'll play each other again next week, Kansas City and the Raiders. So the winner gets a home game. Now, in Miami, Dan Marino has just thrown to Mark Clayton right at the end of the first half, 18 yards for a touchdown, and the Jets and Dolphins are tied 7-7 at Joe Robbie Stadium. All the scores and highlights coming up with Bob at halftime, and the pass is complete. And Dossie fights for a first down, but he doesn't get out of bounds. The clock keeps rolling. But that's why they love him, Jim. I mean, he caught the ball, lost the first down by running away, and still fought his way to the line. That's all he talk about, his play after the catch. All right, that's a good play by Testaverde. They just get up there and throw the ball down. You know, let's take a look at Darcy. This guy is something else. He's a young man coming in here and making some plays. Leads the rookies in reception. Now, he loses the first down, but fights. His determination is amazing, and he's done it all year long. You know what? I think he was out of bounds. I think he should have been rolled out of bounds on that play. 36 seconds to go in the half. It is second down. The Bucks trail 3-0. A blitz from the outside, but they pick it up. A late flag comes in at the 21-yard line as they were really working over Lawrence Dawson. <laughs> now, you know what might have happened here? Because of the pump fakes, the defensive players were breaking because they thought the ball was actually coming. You're right. Wow. So they break on the big punt. Now, you got a big, tall quarterback. He's slinging that arm. He's got the big hands. He's able to hold on to the ball. We and have illegal just... contact. Number 38 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. That completely threw the defenders off balance. Now, that's a good blitz read by a rookie receiver. You saw the guy covering him took off. And the Mike Pryor waited as long as he could. But he said, you know, looking at those pumps, at some point you have to break on the man. The penalty was on Eugene Daniel. First down. Testaverde across the middle. He's got carrier. Touchdown. A read on Mark Carrier. He's playing a zone, finds a soft spot, settles down. Vinny is right on the money. And then the open field play, determination, dragging people in. How about that for a touchdown? 29 yards, Mark Carrier. His second touchdown reception of the season. The Bucks are going to be flagged for that group dance that they did in the end zone. Steve Christie to attempt the extra point. 
And with 21 seconds remaining, here in the first half, Tampa Bay takes the lead on this shot from Testaverde to Carrier. And you know, you have to remember, the bad things that have happened to Vinny, bounces, interceptions that are deflected and bouncing, he's made three or four major league plays today. And that's one of them. I think this day is really symbolic of his season. I mean, he has had these people up out of their seats cheering for him, and yet the next play, he's had them booing him because he has made some bad throws. But he was right there to Carrier, and it's seven to three Tampa Bay. Actually, go back about three plays. He made about three or four good throws in a row to Dossie and Carrier along right. that drive. So the numbers improved, now up to 126 yards passing. A touchdown pass on the day. And on the season, Testaverde now has eight TD passes. And Richard Williamson has his first lead of the day with 21 seconds remaining. And you know, what we're forgetting, I think, here is that the Indianapolis offense has really gone stale itself. And, and you have to question the reason that it's gone stale. I mean, they came out pushing the bubble right in the middle of the, the teeth of that defense and gaining some yardage. They totally abandoned that, went to the pass, and they haven't had any success. Sammy Martin from the five-yard line for the Colts. And he's got a hole. And carries out short of the 40. Al Chambly is in on the tackle. 34-yard return with 12 seconds left. Now, Jeff George has a great arm. So watch out. Here's the starter, 10-minute ticker. We told you about the tie ball game right at the end of the half. What a ball game that must be in Miami. The Clayton touchdown catch from Marino. At halftime, Buffalo leading 7-0. Tied in Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati's moved ahead of the Patriots, 14-7. And Tampa Bay has moved ahead here, 7-3, and a touchdown pass from Vinny Testaverde to Mark Carrier of 29 yards. Tim Manoa. Great run by Manoa, brings it down to the 44-yard line with only four seconds to go in the half, and Indianapolis will call a timeout. They got a chance to throw into the end zone. They can get a good shot at the end zone. They've got the man to sling it down there, and they've got a good receiving core. The Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report coming up. There's the gang right there, Bob, Bill, and OJ. Glad to see that Bill is doing well, and we... Wish Will McDonough a speedy recovery. We understand that he's under the weather. They'll have all the scores and highlights, the playoff implications. And, you know, you're talking about speedy recovery. Uh, Bob Ersay, the father of Jim, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts, is battling the flu. We all wish him a healthy recovery. You know, he's missing only his second game. He flies to all the games. His second game in 20 years. Well, I think we're going to see an old-fashioned bomb right here, and Jeff George does it well. At the 43-yard line, they'll just flood into the end zone and see if they can deflect the ball to a guy in a blue jersey. He's got plenty of room to do it. Oh, he's going to run the ball. Now, what did that accomplish? Unless he's got an incentive in his contract well, for some rushing yardage, I have no idea just, what that accomplished. He wanted to show us he could run. <laughs> and that's what Rick oh, McCurry is saying. Throw, saying the throw the ball. 7-3 <laughs> at the end of the first half. Let's go to New York right now. The Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Friday night at 8 o'clock. Welcome back. The Bucks lead over the Colts by a score of 7-3. Jim Donovan along with Beasley Reese. Let's show you the one big play in this first half right at the end of the first half, too. Vinny Testaverde was having a horrible first half. All of a sudden, Beasley comes through right at halftime. Yeah, uh, he was inconsistent for most of the day. He did get a couple of big plays off, especially this one to Mark Carrier. He made a catch, and then it's beautiful open field running and beautiful effort that gets him in. Hardy takes the kickoff return, then we get some pushing and shoving as Perkins and Hardy get into it after the uh, kickoff return. 
short of the 30-yard line there at the 26. Robert Hardy, a rookie free agent who made the Buccaneers. The penalty is going against Indianapolis, I believe. And the Coors Light halftime statistics for you. Both teams with three turnovers and only in the first half. These you know, that's a sign of an inconsistent team. And when you've got two of them on the field, you expect to get six turnovers in the first half. That's exactly what you got. Total yards about the same. Passing yards, you can see that uh, all of a sudden, the Buccaneers are moving out front in that area due to this man finally coming up with some plays. His numbers getting almost respectable now. Started off bad, but actually came on strong toward the end of the half. Reggie Cobb on first down, finds the seam, and goes out to the 48-yard line. Now, that's one prediction we'll have to watch. You know, we were talking to Reggie, and he said that if they keep giving it to me at some point, I'll break one. He gets a pretty good charge there, and we'll keep our eye on him, see if he can actually come up with that break, the big breaking run that he's talking about. Good run on first down. Now 14 on the day for Reggie Cobb, second year out of Tennessee. And it will be second down at three. So that penalty was against Indianapolis, and the Bucks started at the 41. Here's Cobb twisting, but short of the first down, he'll get to the 49-yard line. You know, that Indianapolis defense has been very consistent all game long. They have been pursuing well. No one's been able to get outside, break any containment. We see that uh, Reggie Cobb got a little foot in the side or something like that that time. Looks like Cobb is laboring a little bit in that offensive huddle for the Bucks. And Charles McRae, their top draft choice out of Tennessee, a tackle checks in as an eligible receiver. That's Jesse Anderson also in as a tight end. On third down and short, Cobb is not going to get it. He'll get dumped for a loss. Mel Agee. Mel Agee was there along with Scott Radisek. He never even a, he never got in any semblance of north and south. Now, you'll take a look at the run here. He's going east-west almost the whole time, and by and large, it's because of that pursuit once again. People hitting him. Some penetration through the line. And just when it looked like Tampa Bay was going to start to move the ball after getting it a good field position to start the second half, they must punt. Royals will hit it at the 32. Verdan is back deep for the Colts. The Colts have committed an awful lot of fouls and penalties on special teams play. Right now, Tampa Bay using a long count to try and draw the Colts offside. At the 13, here comes Verdan. And he goes over the 20 to the 24-yard line. Brought down by Jesse Anderson, who's had a good day. Blocked a punt, and now makes a tackle down on the chase team. Let's check the Hurts 10-minute ticker right now. Miami and the Jets still tied. The winner goes to the AFC playoffs as a wildcard team. Buffalo leading. Frank Reich is quarterbacking the Bills today. And Dallas leads over Atlanta 24-17 at the half. A big game from Atlanta as they try and win the NFC Western Division. At the half, Pittsburgh and Cleveland are tied 3-3, and Cincinnati has padded their lead over New England to 21-7. Verdan is down injured now on the field after that return. Let's see if we can pick up where he got hurt on the play. You know, right on the tackle, he went up in the air, and I think they caught him, and he came down funny. There's where he comes up. And really, basically, you just see people clashing into him. He's up now. So the Colts have the ball, and Beasley, Rick Venturi was very upset with quarterback Jeff George right at the end of the first half. On the last play of the half, they had four wide receivers flushing down into the end zone. George rolled to his right, had nobody chasing him, nor did he have anybody in front of him, and he decided to run the ball and ran it out of bounds instead of giving it a shot into the end zone. You know, a couple of points here. Like you said, he was open enough to step and throw. Now, what I think he forgot is that you're, you're hoping for pass interference on that play as much as you are somebody coming up with a miracle catch. He should have thrown it. Eric Dickerson is in the backfield along with Tim Manoa. Ken Clark, a running back for the Colts, has a bruised thigh. Questionable return for him. Here's Dickerson getting it with Manoa in front. And he's brought down by Keith McCants. Actually, had Dickerson gone with Manoa a little bit more, I think that would have been a bigger play. You know, that play started out bad for the uh, Buccaneers. Broderick Thomas has played well all day long, but this time he loses containment. See him coming up? He lost containment as a result. 
Manoa is able to give a little uh, leadership, taking <laughs> taking Dickerson around the side, but still some very good pursuit by the Buccaneer defense. So he's not having a great year this year, but what a career he's had. And one wonders where that career will continue. Will it continue in the blue and white of Indianapolis or elsewhere? Eric Dickerson. Second down, he gets hit in the backfield. Mm -hmm. Gerald Nichols, his second fine play just like that today. Well, he's made some plays, like you said, and normally when he makes them, it's a, it's a dramatic play. I mean, it's, it's in the end zone. He beats his man immediately, and there's no play. Third down and 10 from Miami, a report right now. Pete Stojanovic has just hit a 22-yard field goal, and the Dolphins lead over the Jets 10-7 in that big game at Joe Robbie Stadium. Shotgun for Jeff George. Colts are two for nine on third down today. They trail the Bucs seven to three here in Tampa on the final Sunday of the NFL. Big rush. George finds Bill Brooks. And the question now is the spot. Does he have the first down? Daryl Fullington and Roger Jones over on the coverage. Yeah, it's going to be close. And that's what we talk about when we say making, uh, making plays. There's basically nothing here facing a zone defense, but George, look at him throwing on the run, puts it dead on the money to give his guy an opportunity. You see the defenders dropping into zones. They'll settle and get ready to break on the ball. Couldn't break fast enough. And I tell you, it'll be hard pressed to see. Oh, very close. They do not have it, and very Indianapolis close. sends in the punting team. Inches away. And because they're so deep in their territory, they cannot risk it. And Rick Venturi will send in Ron Stark to punt. Which has been a bit of an adventure here today. Stark had one blocked <laughs> by Jesse Anderson. And he's been getting a lot of heat. Willie Drury, 87, back for the Bucks. You know, also the, the, the opportunity has been for some good returns. I mean, Stark kicks the ball very well, as, as you know, people know. He's a super punter. But uh, the return men have had a lot of room today. I would be surprised to see something happen. Good punt by Stark. Fair catch, Drury. Oh, and it hit him. It's a loose football. And the Colts should have it. No, now they're going to say that it didn't hit him. And that it will be Tampa Bay ball. Drury called for a fair catch. Yeah, but Michael yeah. Ball ends up with the football. Covington is the player that was right there and blocked into him. Yeah, uh, he was blocked into him. That's the problem. See, so he never really gets a chance. All right, so it did not hit any no. of the Bucks. We'll be right back after this timeout. 7-3. would like to pose the following question. Could your heart benefit from the use of another 24 valves? The Acura Legend Coupe. Now on video for a limited time. Hey, you're not gonna believe what I got you today. Look, it's Fantasia. It's just for you. Well, all right, maybe not just for you. I mean, I gotta tell you, it's magic. That's right. Oh. Nikki, yeah. <laughs> Between you and me, this was our only chance to get it, and I didn't want you to miss it. Walt Disney's masterpiece, Fantasia. It's the perfect holiday gift. Well, of course I got it for you. I'm your dad. Fantasia is ours forever. Hey, D, D Brown, what are you doing here in New York? Purchasing my new dog. In my new shoes. Reebok Army Zone. Reebok Army Zone? Yeah, very lightweight, which is key for this jam. Oh, yeah? Which jam? The King Kong Jam.
NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Acura Automobiles. Experience precision-crafted performance. By Reebok, who reminds you that life is short. Play hard. By Extra Strength Tylenol Gel Caps. For everyday pain, nothing works better. And by AT&T, the right choice. Jim Donovan and Beasley Reese with 10-19 to go in the third quarter. There's Willie Drury, and Covington gets blocked into him. Kind of smart play then by Drury to get out of there and not let the ball hit him, Beasley. And so Tampa Bay gets the ball. Here's Reggie Cobb with a nice cutback to the 37. And he's brought down on the play by Jeff Harrod and Scott Radisek and John Hamm. Super first down play, that's what you're looking for. You know, you can call. There are things in the offensive game plan that can handle uh, second and five, second and six. That's a good first down play. Reggie Cobb, a tale of two halves, first eight games. There you see 199 yards. But then when they decided to give him the ball more, he has shown that he can run with it. Boy, he, he shows you he could be a thousand yard back easily if featured all year long. Testaverde, a play action fake to Cobb. He throws for Carrier, and he's got it at the Indianapolis 49 at a first down. See, you say that's the guy we want all the time. Good coverage, so what does he do? He puts it low and on the inside where only Carrier can reach it. That's good coverage, but well, look at the ball. There's no way you can deal with that as a defender. 14 yards, and now Testaverde and Carrier, who have already connected today for a touchdown, are starting to get in sync. So Mark Carrier has been a little bit off this year. He had a kind of a foot problem, it bothered his cutting. He's not a speed guy, so his cuts are very important. First down, Bucks. Cobb sweeping outside. Got a great block from Lawrence Dawsey. And brings it to the 40-yard line. What a block by Dawsey on the outside. You know, that was a, a beautiful block, beautiful play. You see the folding lineman. Look at him wait. Pick up his blockers. And now it's just get what I can. That's a good play. From the other side, you see uh, Dawsey coming from the back side. Pulling all the way across. And look at Cobb set up his block. That's what the good ones do. That's a nice play. It is second down and less than one. So let's see if Testaverde plays with this down a little bit from the 40-yard line. No, they'll keep it conservative, and Cobb will get a first down to the 33. those backs that just gets better and better the more he does get the ball that's why his argument is keep giving it to me that's right as evidence we present under 20 2.9 over 24.8 first down at the 33 of Indianapolis 748 to go here in the first half and Cobb much more featured now here in the second half 7-3, Buccaneers scoring late in the first half. It's a reverse, and Dawsey, they fake the reverse, and it's picked by Cobb. It will be first and goal at the nine. Well, the fans have something to cheer about here. This is a beautiful play. I mean, it was sold perfectly. Look at the fake. Everybody stops and hesitates for just a second. Cobb does what he does best. The only thing is, look at it. You know, he's up against a real good defensive back in Mike Pryor there. He breaks down and makes a wonderful tackle. One-on-one, -on -one, wide open field like this. The advantage is clearly in the running back's court. But look how Mike Pryor breaks down and saves the tackle. And Mike Pryor was originally drafted by the Buccaneers. 24 yards on the run by Cobb. Robert Wilson out of the backfield in motion. Now they give it to Dawsey. Touchdown! That's a great call. That's a great combination of calls set up by the first reverse. This time they say, is it real or is it not real? This time it was real and a great run, great call. That's super all the way across the board. That's his first carry in the NFL. Dawsey, a touchdown. 
And the point after is good. Very, very creative by the Bucks in a 14-3 lead. should appeal to a driver's appreciation of soft leather, fine wood, and beautiful stretches of asphalt. The Acura Legend Sedan. They say clothes make the man. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no. They're only half right. Yeah. Men's cologne. It's one fashion that outlives the fads. Yeah. What do you smell? I can't smell anything. My nose is clogged, man. Yeah. For fast relief, try Dristan 12-hour nasal spray. Now smell. It's an orange. Dristan nasal spray just works incredibly fast. Dristan, the face of relief today. Coming up next on NBC is the second part of your ticket on the doubleheader today. Kansas City at the Raiders. The winner gets home field in the opening round of the AFC Wild Card playoff game. And, of course, they'll play each other next week again in the playoffs. So the Chiefs and Raiders are next as Sammy Martin is going to bring the ball out from four yards deep. And he dives ahead. There's a loose football down on the field. The Bucks are saying that they have it. But Martin is brought down by Alonzo Hampton. We checked the Hurts 10-minute ticker. Miami's gone ahead, but the real story in that game now is that Reggie Roby, the Dolphins punter, has ripped his Achilles tendon and is out. Pete Stojanovic is now not only place kicking but punting and has hit a 49-yard punt in the game and a field goal. Atlanta has kicked a couple of field goals to get back in that game 24-20. Incidentally, now, uh, as we tell you, Cleveland and Pittsburgh are tied. Let me also tell you that Brad Baxter has just scored for the Jets in that Miami game, and they lead 14-10 now over Miami. Up to date, Hurts 10-minute ticker. Jeff George in trouble. He's throwing. He's got Hester, who was ahead of the field, but it's overthrown at the 45. And see, that's what they talk about. That's what they mean when they say playmaking. Everything had collapsed around that man right there. He bought himself some time by knowing where to move, just kind of finesse, you know, working his working that pocket a little bit, and almost comes up with a monstrous play. All right, let me ask you, Beasley, has Jeff George played well here today? You know, I think given the circumstances, you know, what he's had to hit, he has hit. I think he's made some big league plays. You know, nothing spectacular, but yes, he's put out a solid performance today. He is 10 for 21, 104 yards throwing today. Second down and 10. This is Dickerson. Nowhere. Ray Seals combines with Carl Carter to shut down Eric. All right, again on our Hertz 10-minute ticker. Brad Baxter has just scored for the Jets to take a 14-10 lead, and I believe that's Baxter's second touchdown of the day. So the winner of that game, remember, goes to the playoffs as a wild card team. The loser is out. From the Colts sideline, Clarence Verdan has a sprained right knee off that kickoff return, and he is out for the remainder of the game. So it's third down now, and 11 yards to go. Out of the backfield, the ball is scooped up and caught by Bill Brooks, and he brings it out to the 26-yard line, which is short of a first down. 
run out on the play by Carl Carter and Broderick Thomas, who chased the play down after getting a pretty good rush. That was super pursuit once again. Jeff George taking what the uh, what the defense will give him. How about that quick uh, rise to the feet? When you get knocked down, get up. Nice spin, good play, good pursuit, good everything. G. Thomas ran a long way to get back into that play. Stark to punt. Drew Reed to receive. He was shaken up the last time that he received a punt. But he's back in the lineup, standing back at his 30-yard line. 14 to 3, Tampa Bay. Stark tries to make Drury run to catch it, which he does. And brings it up to the 43-yard line. Tampa Bay starting to play pretty well. They lead 14 to 3. We'll be right back. And Buccaneers to this season, Vinny Testaverde. And the Colts leading 14-3. If Indianapolis could win this game today, they would have the top two draft choices in next April's NFL draft. As on first down, Richie Cobb goes up over the top on the 45-yard line. Now, the history on that situation arising is that Indianapolis traded quarterback Chris Chandler to Tampa Bay last season for the 1992 number one choice of the Bucks. And if Indianapolis won today, the Bucs would have the second worst record in the NFL and therefore would have had the number two pick, but it would belong to Indianapolis. That's what's over there on the Colts sideline hanging in the balance. But right now, Testaverde and the Bucs lead 14 to 3 with 3.50 to go here in the third quarter. Here goes Reggie Cobb. First down to the Indianapolis 40-yard line, and he's got it going now, Beasley. Well, he said, keep feeding me, keep giving me the ball. Nothing happened in the first half. Suddenly, he's had a couple of nice bursts. Now, of course, you got to give a lot of credit to his offensive line. They're cracking some holes for him. He, he went through that one untouched. All of a sudden, look at the numbers. I mean, at one point, folks, he had seven rushes for seven That's yards right. in the game. Now he's got 75. 3.10 to go here in the third quarter. Ron Hall, the tight end, goes down the line in motion. They have not thrown to him today. Robert Wilson, he'll get another first down. We saw him on the first series, but he's been disappearing since then, just primarily as a blocking back being used. Well, he's done a great job. I, you know, his average per carry has got to be pretty good right now. Every time he's touched it, he's made some good plays. Has one nice reception and some good run. We got some good play calling right now. Some real good play calling by uh, the Buccaneers. Two consecutive first downs now. They're inside the Colt 30-yard line. It appears that that Indianapolis defense might be getting a little bit tired. Back to Wilson. Good yardage again, down to the 22-yard line, brought down by Radisek, the linebacker. So they are hitting them with the running game right now, a double dose of Cobb and Wilson. 14-3, Tampa Bay in the lead. They led 7-3 at the half. Testaverde threw a touchdown pass of 29 yards to Mark Carrier just before the break. And then they scored on a reverse play to rookie Lawrence Dossey. Nine yards and a touchdown here in the third quarter. Indianapolis has a 39-yard field goal from Dean Biasucci. Second down and two. Cobb will get the first down to the 17-yard line. Well, when you see those big guys getting up off the ground, you have to, you have to give them a pat on the back right now. The running game is basically taken over down this stretch. Uh, Mayberry, Beckles. Rob Taylor, Tom McHale, Paul Gruber, these guys are, are working right now. They are pushing that pile. So the Cobb numbers get better as he keeps getting the ball. A minute left to go here in the third quarter from Miami. If the uh, Jets-Dolphins game has moved to the fourth quarter, the Jets leading 14-10. First down, Tampa Bay. Reggie Cobb again to the 13-yard line. And the Bucks offensive line is starting to do the job, Beasley, with the running game. Pushing that 
pretty very big Colts defensive front back. And, you know, they're, they're, they're basically changing the line of scrimmage as we uh, move slowly but sturdily into the uh, fourth quarter here. They're starting to push that pocket and, uh, you know, change the line of scrimmage, and that's what you look for. So that's going to do it here in the third quarter as time ticks down. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will take a 14-3 lead into the final 15 minutes and threatening to get some more points. At the end of three quarters, 14-3, right back after these messages from your local station. 42 degrees below zero, and that guy here in Tampa has no shirt on. <laughs> well, how'd you like to dress like that in Indianapolis today and go for a jog outside? All right, Jim Donovan at Beasley Reese as we start the fourth quarter. 14-3, Tampa Bay. They lead over Indianapolis. The Bucks looking for their third win of the season. The ball is inside the 15-yard line, second and six. Reggie Cobb tripped over his own man and got down near the 11-yard line. He tripped over the center, Tony Mayberry. Now, the Bucks have been a good team here at Tampa Stadium. Now, they've lost a lot of games, but look at those scores. Chicago, one point. Buffalo right in the game up until the end. They beat Philadelphia. The only bad game has been against Green Bay. Then they, the pattern follows. They beat Detroit. The Giants had to rally to beat them. Minnesota the same way. They've been tough to beat here at Tampa Stadium. Third down and three. This is a big play for the Colt defense. They'll give it to Cobb. And he won't get the first down. Nice tackle from behind by Dwayne Bickett. And Cobb is not getting up quickly. The Bucks send out the field goal team. Steve Christie will come out. See, Beasley, those are the uh, the plays that the real good teams make, don't they? Third down and three inside it, it really, the scoring zone. It really is. And, you know, it, they strung it pretty well, but there were a couple of pockets there that uh, they simply did not hit. So they'll have to settle for this field goal. The punter, Royals, will hold. The spot comes at the 20... At the, excuse me, that the 18 make it a 28-yard field goal. Christie's kick is up and good. And it gets a little bit tougher for Indianapolis. They trail 17-3. to Steve Christie, after he hit a 28-yard field goal, kicks the ball deep into the Indianapolis end zone. And Sammy Martin will stay in there for a touchdown. Now let's check the Budweiser. Ten-minute ticker. Jets leading in the fourth quarter. Beasley, I understand Miami is driving in that game 14-10. to The winner goes to the playoffs. The loser is up. Buffalo leading 7-0. Atlanta has gone ahead. If Atlanta wins, they wrap up the NFC Western Division. They lead over Dallas by three. Boy, that must be an exciting one in Pittsburgh. 3-3 uh, in the third quarter and Cincinnati leads. Boomer Esiason's had a pretty good day. 21-7. Three touchdown passes in that game. Jeff George is right there to Bill Brooks and a first down to the 36-yard line. Let me also go back on the 10-minute ticker there. Detroit losing in Buffalo today, 7-0 right now in that ball game up in Buffalo. Should Detroit lose that game, Chicago would wrap up the NFC Central Division. Now if the Lions win and come back and win that ball game and the Bears win tomorrow night in their Monday night game, the Bears would still win the division. You know, we showed you that uh, Jeff George has had a great year in completions. Look at Bill Brooks. He's had a good career and hopes to stay with Jeff George for a long time. Screen pass. Dickerson. Running room. Boy, nice move. And a beautiful skirt to the sidelines and a first down to the 47. You know, it was a perfect, perfect setup also. Jeff George sliding back, buying time. It's a super setup now. Let's see what happened to Broderick Thomas here. He basically read it well, but a good block gets him buried. And then Eric does what he's done for so many years. Does it very well. Randy Dixon is the player that put the block on Broderick Thomas. Let's go to New York right now for an NFL Live update. And here's Bob Costas. Jim, we have an item from the NBA and the police blotter as well. The 76ers' Charles Barkley was arrested following an altercation in which he allegedly broke a man's nose early this morning in Milwaukee. The incident is said to have taken place at 2.30 a.m., several hours 
after the Sixers lost to the Bucks. Barkley was arrested at his hotel around 7 this morning. He made bail of $500. It's expected he'll be charged with battery. Jim? All right, thank you, Bob. 17 to 3, Tampa Bay leading over Indianapolis. As Broderick Thomas leaves the game right now, coming to the Buccaneer bench after he was blocked hard on that play by Randy Dixon. Calvin Tiggle, linebacker, comes in to take Thomas's position. It's a first down. Tiggle, just a rookie, one of many on this Buccaneer roster. 12:20 to go in the game. George got away from McCants. Looks for Dickerson, but he hit Tiggle right in the back. As the ball was thrown behind uh, Tiggle, and it hit him in the back, so he comes up with, they can say, good coverage. Yeah, they sure can. And George buys himself a little time here, a little, you know, he kind of raises the ball up, makes uh, Keith McCants jump. See, that's almost, that's almost a play. If he could just get it past him some way, uh, Eric was looking straight back toward the ball. All right, on our Budweiser 10-minute ticker, Stojanovic has just hit a field goal for Miami. Remember, he's punting, too, because Reggie Roby ripped his Achilles tendon. A one-point difference. What a game in Miami. 14-13 in the fourth. And we'll keep you up to date on that one. Second down now for the Colts. George in trouble. And try to get it off to his tight end, Bob Morosco. Broderick Thomas was chasing George and eventually got him, but not before George unloaded. You know, this guy is a lot of fun to watch. I mean, even here, he's in major trouble. And you'll see at the end of this play, he actually shout, gives instructions to that left hand pointing for Morosco to turn up field. Had Morosco responded immediately, he could be running right now. It's almost as if Morosco turned back to him, Beasley, and said, what? <laughs> Well, you can see, we talked about these two quarterbacks, Testaverde and George, limping into the ballpark today. There you have it, sacks a lot, and that doesn't even detail how many times they get hit. It is third down and 10. Sammy Martin, that's a first down for the Colts at the 40-yard line. You know, when you see Jeff George do that, when you see him have time, go back, plant the back foot, and step, you're almost guaranteed it's going to be a perfect strike. Sammy Martin, one of the smart receivers, a true veteran, finding the soft spot in the zone, makes a catch, lies down, first down. Beasley from Buffalo now, as you look at that play to Sammy Martin again. Barry Sanders has gone in from one yard out, and the Detroit Lions are on the board and have tied up the Bills 7-7 in the fourth quarter of play. First down to Indianapolis, trailing 17-3, down by a couple of touchdowns. They've got to really get it going here in the fourth quarter. And they're at the Tampa Bay 40-yard line with Dickerson lined up behind George. He's throwing, coming back to get the ball, and the catch is made by Bill Brooks inside the 30 of Tampa Bay. They'll give him very good forward progress down to the 25. See, that's why people are so excited about Jeff George. And there was nothing there. Absolutely nothing there. You've got a veteran receiver who knows to run back toward the quarterback when he's in trouble and has the concentration to make the catch in a situation like that. You've got a young quarterback playing like a veteran, buying himself time, and look at him, looking to see if it's complete or not while he's being mangled and mauled by the Tampa Bay defense. You know, we should point out that George all this week had no feeling in a couple of his fingers because he took a uh, injury on his left elbow in their game against Buffalo. And just yesterday, he started to get some feeling back in his fingers. Not on his throwing hand. First and ten. Left side. This is Hester. He dropped it. Right on his fingertips. You know, that's a question of matchups. I could see it from here. Jeff George could see it from the field. The way the defense rotated, he knew he had one-on-one. -on -one. He has a man wide open. That is supposed to be a touchdown. It's a tough catch. It's right over his head. But big time, NFL, you got to make that. Is he looking into some sun down there in that corner it's of the end zone? It's very possible. It's very possible as we move to, to lean forward over the booth here to see if the sun's in his direction. I don't think it is. Yeah. Because it looked as though no excuse. Though. No excuse. We tried. Second down for George. He sets it up to Dickerson, who cannot hang on at the 30-yard line. Well, 
Once again, Jeff trying to set it up, back it out of there. Boy, this guy hits the ground a lot. Well, we had some tempers, I believe. Dixon was in there pushing with a couple of the Buccaneer defensive players. There's Broderick Thomas, man on a mission. You know, one of the reasons that some people thought that he didn't get a lot of votes is because he's such a, uh, what do they call that, trash talker uh, yeah. out on the field. Is yeah, that what they call that? That's a good call. That he talks a lot, <laughs> shows up his opponents. Yeah, so, you know, when it's time to vote, they don't vote for him. <laughs> Third down and 10 for Jeff George. With 10-10 to go in the game. Here comes Thomas. He dumps it off to Perkins, and he'll be short of the first down. See, once again, once again, playmaking, this isn't, you know, when you say Jeff George, you don't say mobile quarterback. You don't say, you know, running, scatting quarterback. But look what he does, and he is in trouble. That's a man that he's under duress. I mean, there are people all over him. Derek Tom, uh, Broderick, uh, Broderick Thomas makes the quick move, beats him on the inside, and look at the concentration. We'll be right back. Indy's going to go for it on fourth down. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. By Braun Electric Shavers. It is through superior design that superior performance can be achieved. By Head & Shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Well, Merry Christmas to everybody. Hope you all have a very nice holiday season as we're coming up close. It is fourth down, and actually it's fourth down and 12, not fourth and two. Fourth and 12 for the Indianapolis Colts. Shotgun with four wide receivers in the game. Oh, boy, it might be fourth and even more than that. Vanderpoel, the left tackle, 72, appeared to move. Ball start, number 72 on the offense, prior to the stack, five-yard penalty. You know what happens there, Jim? Vanderpool knows good and well. You're talking fourth and 12. He knows Broderick, and, and those guys are going to come off like they're at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> so he's trying to anticipate just a little bit because he knows people are blowing. You know, it looked almost like Ray Seals came across before Vanderpool pulled out. It's fourth down and 18. He handles a bad snap. He's got Bill Brooks. Touchdown! What a play by the Colts! On fourth down and 18, George throws. Hang on, it's coming back. Uh-oh. What a play by George. I mean, that was simply amazing. Talking about the purchase of time. That's a great play right there just to handle a snap. The old dipsy doodle. When it comes to buying some time, and look at the throw, man. It was perfect. It was right on the money. But a personal foul, number 69 on the offense on the clip. 15 yard penalty. Repeat the goal. There was the clip on the left side of your monitors at home. And it was clearly a clip. Randy Dixon. Let's take a look at it again. Dixon oh, gets yes. beat by Nichols. And oh. so he cheats. He goes from the back, so they'll bring it back. Dixon. Flag for the clipping call. And now they'll have to change their strategy on fourth down and 32. And they'll have to punt. The bad thing is he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it because George was moving so quickly, set up quickly, threw so quickly that, that uh, Nichols never would have gotten there. What a turnaround for Indianapolis. Stark gets a line drive right at Drury at the 15. And Tony Walker makes the tackle out at the 27-yard line. So it's 17-3, Tampa Bay with 9.21 to go. We'll be back. Look for the star. 
stars and you'll find God, my hands Chevy pickup, Astro Suburban, and Blazer gives you anti-lock brakes standard. Chevrolet, the trucks you can depend on, the trucks that last. You know, if you pay as much attention to your jump shot as you do trying to impress women. Well, it's just this new shampoo. My hair comes out looking really good. Shampoo? Yeah, it's got a conditioner in it. Right in the bottle. <laughs> Talked about this before. What? Look. All the condition in the world doesn't mean a thing. I mean, it's your dandruff shows up. Ah, you're not paranoid one. For the first time ever, the world's leading dandruff shampoo comes complete with full body conditioners. Introducing Head & Shoulders 2-in-1. Making all your first impressions all the more impressive. At Braun, we believe even if you're not at your best in the morning, at least you can look like you are. Braun, the world's number one selling foil shaver. Well, Indianapolis lost a touchdown on a tremendous fourth down pass play from Jeff George to Bill Brooks. They have to settle the punt instead. Randy Dixon clipped on the rollout by Jeff George. Now, with eight minutes to go, the Jets lead by one. The winner of that game goes to the playoffs. Dan Marino was intercepted at the Jet 10-yard line just moments ago. Eight minutes to go in that game. Let's go back to the 10-minute ticker if we could because we can uh, also show you the importance of the other games. Detroit is tied. So they would stay in contention to win their division. Chicago would still need a win tomorrow night if Detroit and Buffalo end tied in that game. Atlanta is now losing to Dallas. Emmett Smith scored in that game. So New Orleans can win the division and get a home game if they win their ball game. Pittsburgh's gone ahead of Cleveland, and Boomer Esiason has thrown three touchdown passes, and Cincinnati's ahead. Nice play there by Chip Banks, wrapping up Reggie Cobb in the backfield. The Bucks, of course, trying to run the clock down here. Beasley, can you remember the last time Testaverde threw? I was just thinking about that. I, I can't remember here in the second half. Well, there's a guy that had, they say, some of the greatest God-given ability ever laid on a football player, but somehow his career just never lived up to the greatness that he really had. Chip Banks. 8-10 to go in the game. Testaverde. Here's a pass to Wilson, but he's in all kinds of trouble. And Jeff Harad makes a super play to get him. There's a flag down at the 21-yard line. It might be a block from behind on Tony Mayberry, the center. Or a holding call. That was Testaverde's first pass. Illegal block in the back, number 61 on the offense. Penalty declined, fourth down. That was his first pass, Beasley, in the last 14 plays. And a 10-yard loss. So the Colts refuse the penalty, and Alan Grant is in there because, remember, Clarence Verdan went out injured here in the Alan second Grant half. for the Colts. Indianapolis trails Tampa Bay 17 to 3. If the Colts rallied and won the game, they would guarantee themselves the top two picks, one and two, in the draft in April. Royals punts it. Grant takes it at the 42-yard line and quickly to the 47. Alonzo Hampton is down on the special teams coverage. Christmas Day. Here's your lineup. It starts with showtime at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Then the Lakers and Clippers. And you know that used to always be a blowout series, Beasley. But the Clippers have gotten very good. So that's your first game. That's not enough for you? Well, look what comes up after that. 9 o'clock Eastern time. Boston and Chicago. Bird and Jordan at Chicago Stadium. What a day of NBA basketball Christmas Day on NBC. Well, Jeff George has got some throwing to do with seven and a half remaining in the game. A trail by two touchdowns. And he's gonna run right into the rush of Nichols for a sack. Yeah, you know, Nichols has really mixed it up well here today. He's been in on a lot of good plays this time. 
George can't work any magic whatsoever. He runs right into Nichols, who had beaten his man quickly. And there's a sack. Second of the day for the Bucs defense. Nichols has trapped the Colts running backs deep in the backfield twice and now gets a quarterback sack. 7 and 11 remaining here in the ball game. Second down and 18. George fires, Bill Brooks catches, and Brooks is all the way up to the 48-yard line. Ricky Reynolds on the coverage for Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers are playing a zone defense now. It's not a, a really soft zone, but it's soft enough where you just say, we aren't going to give up anything cheap. So you allow the guys to catch the ball underneath you, come up and make the tap. Beasley, they are two touchdowns behind Indianapolis at 17 to 3. We have six and a half minutes left to go in the game, and they are just moseying up to the line of scrimmage. It's almost time to go into the hurry up offense. It is very close. Uh, you know, you really don't see a sense of urgency right now, but they do need to strike quickly. So it's third down. Out of the backfield, and Dickerson gets hit hard by Solomon, but he had dropped the ball before that anyway. <laughs> Well, that's one of those split concentration deals that time. Dickerson out of one eye saw Solomon coming at him. The other eye, he tried to focus on the football, and that really doesn't work. And the Colts will have to give up the ball. Ron Stark is in again. This will be his eighth punt of the day. Willie Drury is back deep for the Buccaneers. 6-12 remaining. It hits at the 20 and is grabbed there by Carl Carter. Dangerous play, but he holds on to the ball. We'll be right back. 17 free bucks. Why not have one for the road? Someone is counting on you. It could be your year for Lotto. You haven't seen Europe yet. In fact, you never know what's around the corner. If you need a better answer, you don't understand the question. A message from Bud Grime. Who killed the president? Oh, man! Richard Corliss, Time Magazine, calls JFK a knockout, electrifying, breathless, enthralling, sensational, terrific. Oh, this has been shot! David Anson, Newsweek, calls it stunning, powerful, remarkable. It holds the audience wrapped in its grip. Kevin Costner in an Oliver Stone film. Let justice be done on the heaven's fall. JFK, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. The performance of a Chevrolet is determined by many factors. We consider volumetric efficiency, coefficient of drag, yaw damping, polar moments of inertia, induction velocity, camber, caster, bounce, rebound, thermodynamic load, slip angles, linkage arrangements. And at Chevrolet, we also take into account the yeehaw factor. The, the cars more people depend on. There's a cologne that preferred men prefer. Preferred stock cologne from the House of Stetson. Smooth and extra special. Preferred stock cologne. What preferred men prefer? All right, the AFC playoff picture. Let's bring it up to date for you. Buffalo is the number one seed, home all the way through. Houston has to wait to see what happens between Denver and San Diego this afternoon. If Denver wins later this afternoon at San Diego, they will have a bye and home field for their first playoff game, and Houston would have to play next week. We'll get back to that in a second. Testaverde throws. It's caught. And Cobb gets a first down out over the 30-yard line. Quintus McDonald is in on the tackle. Raiders in Kansas City are coming up. That's whoever wins that ball game this afternoon out in Los Angeles gets home field next week. They'll play each other again next week in the opening round. And the Jets are leading over Miami right now. The winner of that game goes to the playoffs. The loser is out. So that's the AFC side of things. The Jets have just gone ahead in the game in Miami, 
And that's late in the fourth quarter as they have added a field goal. Over on the NFC side, Washington is the number one seed. Chicago plays tomorrow night. Detroit has just gone ahead of Buffalo on an interception return by Sheldon White of 18 yards. If Detroit wins, the Bears would have to win tomorrow night to win their division. Atlanta is losing. They could wrap up their division with a win today. New Orleans plays later this afternoon. If Atlanta lost and the Saints won, New Orleans would win that division, get a bye and home field, and Dallas is winning today. They're already into the playoffs. Testa Verde. Cobb. First down. Some pretty weak tackling by the Colts. It really was. And, uh, you know, nice little touch here by Vinny. Just locked, putting it right where he needed to put it. And that's just, well, you know, good move, tough tackle, whatever you want to call it. But a good play by Cobb and a good play by Vinny. You do not see Scott Radisek miss many tackles. He did just there, though. And Siragusa chased down Reggie Cobb. So now you look at Cobb's numbers receiving the ball as they start to find him out of the backfield. Testaverde, who had a terrible first half and then ended with a flurry, now is 14 for 30 for 163 yards. Highsmith is into the game, and Alonzo carries out to the 49-yard line. Let's check the Budweiser 10-minute ticket. And go around the league on this final Sunday. Jets, as we told you, lead 17-13. Three minutes to go in that game. Detroit leads over Buffalo on that interception by Sheldon White that he took back for a touchdown. Dallas leads in a wild game in Dallas, 31-27. And those are our other two games that are going on with no playoff implications at all What's in those games. Tampa Bay leading Indianapolis, 17-3 with 3.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. Reggie Cobb to the 47-yard line. Quintus McDonald again makes the stop. Back to our initial theme here this afternoon, and that is that we have two head coaches that are very much on the bubble. Rick Venturi and Richard Williamson. And you wonder if the Buccaneers hold on today. Will that be enough for them to get Williamson the job as Beasley met with Hugh Culverhaus this afternoon before the game. He'll meet with him on Friday. Is that it, Beasley? That's it. He'll meet with him Friday, and basically it's a salesman job. You know, Richard will have to show him what he plans to do and where he thinks this organization needs to go. Drury makes the catch and dives for a first down. <laughs> At the 41-yard line. <laughs> So we're coming up near the two-minute warning with 2.40 to go. Over on the other sideline, Rick Venturi. You wonder about the performance here today. Would this be the kiss of death if he brings back a loser here this afternoon and not a very good performance by the Colts today? Would the Ursays decide to look elsewhere? He's lost two big ones. You know, he lost the Patriot game a couple of weeks ago, and if he ends up losing this one, it, would, it wouldn't bode very well. Cobb is hit behind the line of scrimmage and fumbles the ball, and it's picked up by Jeff Harrod. And the Colts recover the ball. And I think I'm going to pay for an airline ticket and send him over to Hawaii. <laughs> He's played that well today. He is all over the place. Let's see if we can figure out the reason for the fumble here. Basically, Cobb just runs into his own man. And there's Jeff moving to the ball constantly, like he always does, coming up with something. It looks like Siragusa knocks the ball loose, and then Harad covers. So Reggie Cobb loses a couple of yards and the ball, and now has 90 yards rushing on the day. And Indianapolis really needs some late, late points here. There's Jeff Harad. Another workmanlike effort by the fine Colts linebacker. Dickerson runs it to the 50-yard line. They are 14 points down, and they run on first down with two minutes remaining in the game. We'll be back to wrap it up here from Tampa after this timeout.
And on the trucks that last. Now it's easier to own a Chevy truck. I choose isotoner gloves. Whoa, did I forget anyone? Catch this. So you take care of the hands. Take care of you. The Chiefs. The Raiders. Two wild cards in a Wild West showdown. Next. Two minutes to go here this afternoon at Tampa Stadium. 17-3, the Buccaneers holding on to a 14-point lead. Indianapolis has the ball right square at midfield. Second down and seven. Jeff George in a shotgun with Eric Dickerson in the backfield with him. He gets sacked. Chambly teams up with Jesse Solomon. Well, he couldn't buy any magic that time. He has done it so many times today. This time, everything collapses around him. And, boy, that's what that's the way it's been all year long for this guy. Uh, patchwork, offensive line, so many different people in and out. He has developed quite a knack for finding the opening as a result of what he's gone through this year and, and last year also. So the future should be good when it comes to creative play for Jeff George. Looks like he might have a sore neck after that play as they call timeout. Stay tuned now. We'll be sending you on your way out to watch Kansas City and the L.A. Raiders. The Chiefs and Raiders will play next week in the opening round of the playoffs against each other. Today is just to decide where they are going to be playing next week. So that's coming up next. Both teams struggling with quarterbacks. Jeff George back in there. There's your timeout situation. Minute 54 remaining, 17 to 3, Tampa Bay in the lead. The ball is back at the 42 yard line of Indianapolis. Third and 15. He is in trouble, gets it to Dickerson. And he's brought down by Fullington at the 49 yard line. So it's fourth down, and they got to go for it. They've got to go for it. Once again, another example of pocket wisdom by Jeff George. I mean, he kind of weaves his way and figures out a way to get it out of her. Now nah, he's put on a show today. He's done well. Fourth down and five. Make it six. And George has got a first down at the 40-yard line. It is Bill Brooks, who's had a big day. Seven catches on the day for Bill Brooks. And a first down, and that's the most important thing for the Colts. 76 yards in receiving, plus he had a touchdown wiped out. Coming up to a minute remaining. Sack. Roderick Thomas with a flag down. So Broderick asks for and receives a standing ovation here from his fans. Even after he was... number 72 on the offense, penalty declined. Even after his face mask was grabbed, Vanderpool did everything he could to stop Broderick from turning that corner, but he gets it done. Now he had some lofty goals coming into this game. He wanted to get three sacks. 13 tackles to set some records. Under a minute to go. George has got some room now, and he fires for Sammy Martin. It's incomplete. 
out of bounds. Carl Carter was on the coverage at the 10. Uh, Jeff, there's only 50 seconds left, and maybe next year it will get better. Well, you know, he was not shy about saying he's very excited to get this one over. He's learned a lot. Team has got a lot of work to do. He's going to take a one-month vacation in Florida and try to begin to get it all. From Miami, the Dolphins have the ball right now on the Jet one-yard line, and it's fourth down. They trail by four, 17-13 in that game. They are actually inside the Jet one-yard line with 50 seconds to go in our ball game. He got away, but not that time. Red Hall finally gets the sack. Fifth of the day for the Bucks defense. And it is just tee-off time right now for Tampa Bay on that man. Well, it's easy when you know what they have to do. And that's the position that, you know, tough teams, teams that are having a tough time, they have a difficulty putting teams in this position. Well, the employee and owners of Avis salute the game's MVP. Got off to a tough start, but Vinny Testaverde got the Bucks going, and he's the winner of the We Try Harder Award today. Avis, the official car rental company of the NFL. Congratulations to Vinny. 35 seconds remaining. It's fourth down for Indianapolis. Ball is back at the 45-yard line of Indianapolis. Now, if Indianapolis loses here today, they are still going to have to wait to see where they would pick with that set with that Tampa Bay pick next year. It could be the number three pick. It could still be the number two pick. What they have to do is figure out strength of schedule. They all put it in a formula. And when the numbers come out sometime tomorrow, they will exactly know at that point where they will choose with that Tampa Bay selection. So they still could end up with the number one and two picks in the draft in April. Fourth down and 25. That's as hopeless as it gets, I think. Little dump pass to Dickerson. And that will do it. Tampa Bay stops him. Jesse Solomon gets him. From Miami, the Dolphins have just scored on fourth down from inside the one. Dan Marino has thrown a touchdown pass as the Dolphins shoot ahead of the Jets in that ball game at Joe Robbie Stadium. 26 seconds remain here. Richard Williamson will find out on Friday what his future is. As we take a look at today's Cannon Cam Quarter replay of the game, Beasley. You know, it was set up by a fake reverse one play prior. They come back with it with a great call, great run by Lawrence Dossie. Our Cannon Cam Quarter replay of the game. That's a good looking rookie. 45 seconds left in that game in Miami. 26 seconds left here. The touchdown pass was from Marino to Farrell Edmonds to give the Dolphins the lead. As Testaverde puts the knee down, Rick Venturi will come over and congratulate Richard Williamson on quite a ball game by Tampa Bay as they win for the third time today. So that will do it here from Tampa Bay as the Bucks end up winners. 17-3 for Beasley Reese. This is Jim Donovan saying so long from Tampa. Let's go to New York now. And here's Bob Costas. Okay, as Jim Donovan just told you, Dan Marino, seconds ago, on fourth and goal from the one, little play-action fake, and then a flip to Farrell Edmonds, who was wide open at the back of the end zone. Stoyanovich with the extra point, Dolphins 20, Jets 17, loser goes home, winner goes to the wild card round. Here's the go-ahead touchdown. I'd say he was open there in the back of the end zone, as wide open as anyone could be. There's Farrell Edmonds. Now the Jets, of course, still have a chance to force overtime. If they can come up with a field goal here, I believe they have at least one timeout remaining. About 45 seconds to play in the game, and we're going to send you there now and pick up the call by Tom Hammond and Joe Namath. Remember, the Jets just need three to tie if they can somehow get a big play. The Jets have two timeouts remaining, I believe. 
Merrill Edmonds making the reception for the touchdown. Shaking off an interception at the goal line on the previous possession. Throws the perhaps winning touchdown of the game. Had two clutch plays in the game. That pass and the one he had on the last play of the first half to tie the game at seven. who caught the touchdown pass just got a hand on the streaking Terrence Mathis to trip him up. Jets with two timeouts left. 38 seconds on the clock. Burkett and Toon are wide to the left. Moore and Mathis to the right. Bryant heaves downfield, wide open, the catch made at the 47. Rob Moore got in the middle of the defense again, and the Jets stopped the clock with their second timeout, 27 seconds left. That was a big completion. 23 yards. Ball spotted at the 47-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. O'Brien consulting with his head coach and offensive coordinator, Bruce Cosman. Coming up, the Chiefs and the Raiders or the Broncos and the Chargers. That's the second game of our NBC doubleheader. The game could possibly, if they can get one more big play, come down to the man signed this week. Raul Alegre was working on his master's degree in civil engineering at the University of Texas in Austin when the Jets called, needed someone to replace the injured Pat Leahy. Louis Aguiar had a chance last week and hit only one of two. So Alegre tried out was signed the newest member of the New York Jets. His last field goal good after bouncing off the upright. It could come down to a tying attempt for Alegre. But first, the Jets must get closer. Again, O'Brien has a man open. Terrence Mathis has a first down to the 33-yard line of the Dolphins. That's a 50-yard attempt right now. Saving a timeout. O'Brien throws it incomplete for Mathis. Eight seconds left. Will they try one more play? Yeah, you can try one more play as long as you have that one more timeout left. They have one timeout left, so he can call a pass to complete it in the middle of the field and call a quick timeout, but it's got to be pretty fast. The ball is at the 33-yard line. That would be a 50-yard field goal attempt if they get no closer. Allegra signed this week. What are his thoughts right now? But Aguiar hit a 51-yarder up at New England that was called back. They may go to the long kicker. What is this? McNeil on a draw. They don't have enough time, do they? Out of bounds, two seconds left. That's cutting it close. <laughs> Which is the understatement of the day. Kaza says hurry up. He doesn't want a delay call. He's got 30 seconds left, 28 seconds on the play clock. He has time going. It'll be a 44-yard attempt. Raul Allegra to tie. What pressure.
Allegra has made a lot of new friends in a hurry. <laughs> he certainly has. Oh, 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 what pressure. Did he respond to the pressure? Oh, my. Perfect kick. Looks like it's going to go a little left, but then it comes right back in toward the middle. Nice little draw, nearly the center. Highball game, and we're going into sudden death. <laughs> My, oh, my. That draw play to Freeman McNeil was a gutsy call. Was it ever a gutsy call? A good hold by Allegra. Got to give that man credit, too, for getting it down there. Or a good hold by Aguiar, excuse me. I keep getting those two names a little bit confused. Miami Dolphins have won the toss and will receive to start the overtime period. Good practice yesterday. Seemed a little tight. He's as anxious.